juice. And this right here is American Wonder Boy Thompson, I guess. Hey, that's it. That's right, baby. Hey, boss. So glad to be out here hanging out with you guys at Karate Combat. And boy, am I stoked for these fights tonight. Oh, man. George Palmer and myself can't wait to have you in the commentating booth with us tonight. Uh, boy, you look uh, shabby, I should Thank say. Thank you, man. You don't look too shabby yourself. And hey, hey, I like the hair. You like the hair. It's a little itchy, though, you know, I got to tell you. <laughs> but you know, that's the price you pay for when you want to look beautiful and when you want to fit the Halloween theme ooh, that we have going ooh. on tonight. Speaking of, are you scared easy? Because, oh, well, gee, oh, that's out, what I mean. Oh, you got to kick him in the scared. face, though. It's very important to they're kick getting, him in the face. Getting, watch out, they're getting kick. busy. But Yes, speaking of fights, we got an awesome card. 10 fights on the card, and this is literally the biggest fight card we've had yet at Karate Combat. Yes, we do. We have Edgar Screevers, the former champion, he's going to face. Bruno Souza, the lifelong student from Lyoto Machida. And boy, the last time out here, he made such an impressive debut that they set him up right away against the ex champion. So this is going to be a crazy fight. Franklin Mina, he's going to fight Eagle Castaneda in the co main event. And then we have newcomer James Vick, he's fighting George Perez. And for the rest, we have a plethora of great karate cast competing right here in the pit behind us. And for now, the only thing I can come up with is it's showtime. <laughs> Woo! Watch out, watch out. October 29th, Halloween weekend. Karate Combat's back. Don't miss out. A newcomer, Diego Avendaño. He's going to take on Fernando Paz. Voy a destrozar a mi oponente. We've got one more amazing newcomer. He is taking on the fast Jorge Perez. He's just coming in to kill or be killed. May the best man win. Franklin versus Igor is going to be a banger of a fight. Both these guys want to rectify, set the record straight. Screevers versus Sousa. Edgar Screevers is a monster. That was not enough to beat Luis Vito, huh? The beautiful destruction is going to return to the pit. When I enter the pit, I'm the bear slayer. I don't care. I'm a tiger. I'm not a bear. I can rip him out. It's kill or be killed. Woo! Hello and welcome to Karate Combat 36, the Halloween edition. My name's Josh Palmer, joined by Bass Rudin, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, alongside Alex Wendling and Robin Black. And boy, do we have an event in store for you tonight. Uh, guys, you've done a great job teeing us up there. That main event tonight, Edgar Screevers taking on Bruno Souza. Bass, Edgar Screevers, he is coming off that loss. He's going to bounce back, though. I mean, this guy is the definition of tough. He is. You know, he said he made a mistake last time. He says, there's no excuses. He says, but I took him lightly. And he said, like, again, no excuses, but no more. I'm going to come in. I'm going to smash this guy. This is literally what he said. Yeah, and Wonderboy, he's fighting Bruno Souza, who, let's face it, is about as complete a martial artist as you can get. 100%. He's known as Leo Tomachita's protege, the next Leo Tomachita. This guy's very good at closing the gap. He's looking to put those combinations up and, of course, to get that KO. Yeah, what a fantastic main event that is. Of course, that's not all we've got in store. We've got another nine bouts on the card tonight. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's coming up this evening. So as we've just mentioned, your main event is the return of our former lightweight champion, Edgar's the best layer, Screevers, taking on Brazilian Bruno the Tiger Souza. Co-main event tonight is in the middleweight division, where the Iberian bull, Igor de Castaneda, faces Franklin the Bullet Mina, with both men aiming to bounce back from tough losses. Highly anticipated promotional debut before that, as former MMA standout James Vick starts his karate combat career against tough but inconsistent Dominican George Perez. Also in the welterweight division, Spaniard Fernando Paz takes on Venezuelan Diego Amandano as they open up our main card this evening. High-paced lightweight bout on deck in bout number six this evening. Mitchell the Ghost Thorpe meets Tommy Noxukau Azuz. At the other end of the spectrum, heavyweight action between two debutants, Elvin Agaev and K.I. the Cobra Callaway. Before his fourth appearance at Karate Combat, Nikos F-16 Gidakos is in for a tough test against former WKF World and European Champion Kenji Grion. Uh, we've also got bantamweights Abdul Salam Amaknasi and uh, Calvis Kalnins in a prelim bout tonight. Enticing women's strawweight fight coming up very shortly in bout number two as Christina Cavacopolo looks to stay undefeated as she welcomes the Filipino warrior Kai Assessor to Karate Combat. And we open up the event next in the bantamweight division. Maximiliano La Rosa makes the trip up from Uruguay to take on dynamic striker Damian Villa. 
Uh, Abbas, Damien Villa, dynamic striker, kind of sums it up, because this guy's got a fantastic taekwondo background. Oh, his leg speed is just crazy, and he said he had double the amount of time to prepare than he had last time. He's feeling great. He's going to use his front leg a lot, with front kicks and roundhouse kicks to the body and to the head, and he says his opponent is aggressive, and in order to stop him, he's going to just push him backwards. His dream knockout would be a spinning head kick. <laughs> so let's see if he can pull it up. Yeah, and one the boy, Maximiliano La Rosa. Uh, you know, he's fought very, very recently, albeit in sport karate. Yeah. He fought, he competed the eighth of this month, so a pretty, pretty quick turnaround. He says that his opponent's got great kicks. Not a big puncher, though, so he's looking to counter that. So he feels that like he's got a better combination than his opponent, and he's looking to land that right hook. Yeah, very exciting bout on deck. First, let's go ahead and meet these two competitors, Damien Villa and Maximiliano La Rosa. Soy muy completo y, y muy fuerte. Tiene que preocuparse por muchas cosas. My distance control is going to help me to outscore my opponent. It's going to be my first win in karate combat. Hitting and not getting hit. That's what's going to get me the victory. Yo soy una persona impredecible y voy a poder acabar con él. So we welcome our first fighter to the pit this evening, Damien Supervia Via, representing the United States of America. As we mentioned, he has that Taekwondo background, and he said tactically he feels he's perhaps more defensive than offensive, but if he sees an opportunity, he's going to go big with the offensive combinations, and that's what we expect from some of those spinning kicks, the double kicks, the head kicks, all the things that we, uh, we can expect from Taekwondo practitioners Interesting first bout for him here, though, as he enters the karate combat pit to try and avenge that 0-1 loss last time out. But, you know, having double the time to prepare, that is going to be good for him. Plus, the ice is broke. Out of the red corner, welcome, Maxi LaRosa! And his opponent tonight in the red corner, Maximiliano La Rosa, representing Uruguay. As you heard Wonderboy mention a moment ago, he is coming fresh off the South American Games earlier this month in October. Granted, that was in sport fighting context, but a full-time karate competitor alongside uh, fantastic dojo he owns back in Uruguay. All his students there watching this evening. Wow. Oh, yeah. Both guys look very calm right now. They got the jitters out in the back. They're ready to rock and roll, baby. So, tail of the tape for Damien Villa, 32 years old. You see that 0-1 record, that only loss coming to Gabriel Stankunis by uh, unanimous decision back in June of... Uh, oh, June this year, actually. And this is his opponent, Maximiliano La Rosa, in the red corner. You can see the leg reach there, six inches less in the legs, the shorter of the two fighters, quite substantially, but he is making his karate combat debut tonight. Fighters, it is time to enter the pit. So your referee for this bout is Mr. Mark Goddard. Karate Combat 36 is powered by Hedera. Three three-minute rounds on the clock if they need them. White pants for Villa and black pants There's the front for legs that he said. Body already, and head. Already started throwing those side kicks. I love it. Keep him away. Yeah, you can already see the, the reach advantage in the legs for, uh, for yeah. Damien Villa. Beautiful side kicks. Both guys, Yoko Giri, as they oh, called it. Both guys in a, in, a, in a closed stance. I wonder if they're going to switch out there. Yep. Oh, oh, oh, oh. knee was that, right? That was beautiful. And a good bit of ground and pound there from 
La Rosa gets turned over at the end, though. Wow, this is exciting. Yeah, nice of ground and pound. These are a newer addition to the Karate Combat rule set. We brought them in back at Karate Combat 35, so really waiting for some of these fighters to adjust. That's a fantastic head kick. Man. But he's taken down to the ground. Some strong ground and pound from La Rosa. Villa came very close to lights out there. Oh, yeah. man, perfectly timed. That was quick. He didn't even see it coming. He laid in the splits. Did you see that on the ground? That was crazy. Van Dam style. Hey, while I'm down here, I'm just going to stretch a little bit, you know. <laughs> Guys, you can see that low guard from uh, from Villa. Very typical of competition taekwondo. Oh, yep. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Man, La Rosa, his ground and pound. He's got some power in his hands if he connects with one of those shots. Vicious. Yeah, I love the switch kicks there that he's throwing, but he ends up on his back a lot. He's getting taken down a lot. Toe-to-toe well, -to -toe here. That southpaw stance of Villa switches back to orthodox. Minute 20 left on the clock in this opening stanza. Good low cat kick there. He nice. felt that. Nice kicking and get out of the way. Beautiful oh, body kick to the liver. That was nice. That might have hurt him a little bit. I think so. Yeah, that's he made little. a little move, right? Yeah. Yeah, La Rosa doubled over a little bit there and again tries to find that liver up the open side. The switching of the stance for Villa paying dividends. You see La Rosa kind of drop that backhand, cover that liver up a little bit. I think that did hurt him. Yep. So now it's time for a head kick. Oh, he was going for it. <laughs> yeah, he got it, but he's got a scramble here. It's good blitz closure from La Rosa. Remember, the Karate Combat scoring favors aggressiveness and effective striking above all else. Vila, what he should do now is a liver kick, liver kick, liver kick, high kick. You know, because he's that I fast, agree. he can do that. Dang, dang, dang, and then the fourth one, go to the head. Switching. That was that spinning kick he was looking for. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like it's coming. Oh, he switched back. Villa's gonna look for that left kick, watch it. I love the time uh, uh, when the opponent throws across to, to land that liver kick underneath. That's a nice little technique, and he's waiting for it, it look, almost looks like. Well, they've only got 10 seconds left here. Plenty of time for someone to get one more strike in. Villa goes searching. As you notice, La Rosa is covering up his body as he works his way in, because Villa's back leg roundhouse kick to the liver, I think, has done some damage. I think so, too. First round in the books there. Let's go ahead and take a look back at some of the replays from round number one. Bass, Steven, talk us through these. Well, as you know, oh man, that, that, that lead leg off the sidewall caught by La Rosa, though. Now, this is where the ground to pound happens right here. I'm not sure if he landed some good ones. I think more glancing blows here. Not a whole lot of damage, but doesn't look good for Villa. Plus, he looked Oof. nice high kick there. Did it pull it through, though? Otherwise, that could have been a knockout there. There was a good bit of contact, though. Hey, guys, if you have to uh, make a, a split decision on that uh, first round, who are you going with? Uh for the first three minutes. You gotta go to Villa. I gotta go with Villa. Yeah, he, he's, he, he, he was the dominator, so to say. More action-packed, love the kicks. He's definitely more dominant in that first round. Well, the guys get their minute to recover between rounds. They're gonna head back down into the pit, get the second round underway. Villa is such a good counter kicker. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very rare that you see good counter kickers. Yep. So I feel like he's kind of put La Rosa in a box a little bit. La Rosa's kind of afraid to come in now. Especially after that liver kick. Oh, yes. Yep. Get another, inside the head. Another three minutes on the clock. Villa starts again in that southpaw stance. How, how confusing can that be for an opponent when they're constantly switching between the orthodox and the southpaw position? It's everything. If you're not used to that, that's a big problem you're facing. Especially when you do it like per round, because you know you figure that you you figured your opponent out, then they switch. Oh, oh there it I, is, and she's there it waiting is. to land that left kick every time, and it's fully with the shin as oh, well. Oh. You see, you see La Rosa's body shake when it lands. Oh, there, it is there again. again. It's just waiting for it. Oh, got to come up over the guard this time. That's just chase back up the wall. I love it. You see, that's the great thing about this bit. Yeah, I mean, he could have pushed, jumped, and kicked off there if he <laughs> felt like it. Almost landed that knee in the first round. Well, this looked like the Lee almost. The speed of Villa on his retreating movement is just phenomenal, man. He's quick. Yeah, it's a good blitz again from La Rosa, though, and he's doing some good ground and pound work. Man, his whole body weight in there, beautiful. I mean, he's got a boxing background, it has to be. This is where La Rosa has got to keep the fight. He's got to catch the kick, he's got to get the takedown, and he's got to ground the pound. What is he, what's he looking for to try and time that blitz in to close the distance on that kick? Uh, Villa or, or La Rosa? La Rosa. La Rosa's looking for the punch because he knew that Villa had less punches and he says, I'm going to try to counter which strikes. So that's what he's kind of doing already. 
But if you notice, uh, Villa is keeping him away with that side kick. Look at him. Yeah, and keeping away with the side kick. There it is. Get away. Try to keep that distance. Switching stance again. Oh, waiting for that cross. Oh, looks for the throw. They can, of course, throw from those upper body transitions. We've seen some fantastic, even knockout slams in previous karate combat events. Oh, oh there it is. The second again. round here. I feel like LaRosa is now just Last trying to minute. take the shot to get to land those hands, huh? He, yes, and, and that's, that's his way. He needs to win, you know, because right now he's behind. And he needs to look for a knockout. Go for a straight to the body, you know, yes. of a kick. That's always underrated because most of the time when somebody kicks and they pull back, they breathe in. So the muscle is relaxed, the belly is relaxed, and then hit that body Whoa. shot. Just watching that kick land makes me hurt. <laughs> Oh, there it is. He's going to close the gap. Oh, again, Damien Villa lands that rear side kick, but he's backed up once more. Finally considered a downed opponent here. Yeah, he was sitting on him. Then it's not allowed to do crowd and pound. You have to stay on your feet. Yeah, you've either got to have the soles of your feet on the ground or one knee on your opponent in order for the ground and pound to be legal. Ten seconds. Who's going to go? Who's going to win this round? It's a, it's a much closer round. I, I agree. Some good adjustments made oh. by Maximiliano La Rosa, perhaps. I think that's a La Rosa round right there. Yeah, I, I think, think so, too. The yeah. round and pound definitely played off in this round. And it's he just his striking in general, you know, he was countering, so... Well, let's, uh, let's go one ahead one. and take a look at some of the replays from that second round, see what work La Rosa was able to do. Oh, there again is that man. liver kick. Man, beautifully timed. La Rosa... Looked like it even hurt him though. He took it like a champ. Yeah. This is where La Rosa is gonna have to keep the fight right here. Close the gap, catch a kick, get him down, and this is where he needs to be more aggressive. And that's how I think he won this round. Yeah, this and, and, and he count. said it. He said exactly that this was going to be his game plan. Countering the kicks and coming forward with a strike. That landed, that oh, right yeah. hand there. Vila's got a hard head. Didn't even flinch. There we get a shot in the two corners as the round break ends. Third and final three minutes on the clock here. All to play for potentially between Damien Villa and Maximiliano La Rosa. Could be one each, so whoever's going to win this round it's might all. win the fight. Yeah, I mean, certainly neither one can, can predict they're up, so... Oh, look at that! There we go. That was nice. Stomping side kick off the pit. That was beautiful. A you jumping know, sidekick, that is kind of I weird. Mean, you nice. know, one thing we haven't really touched on is that Damien Villa has been teaching Luke Rockhold some, <laughs> some taekwondo. Wow, uh, Luke is good. I mean, I saw him landing in uh, that, that question mark kick. By the way, we saw, Stephen and I saw you. Oh. <laughs> Doing good at that. Very good, Josh. Bella. Try and get stuck in. 2.20 left on the clock here. Villa yeah, still firing those rear leg kicks. Stop. And Bas, something you always talk about is setting those kicks up with punches. Is that something that Villa should be doing, or is the speed of his legs compromised by doing so? Well, you know, yes, uh, yes and yes. But I would prefer it, like, if he starts with kicks, kicks, kicks, and suddenly he starts uh, landing kicks after combinations with the hands, I think it's a much better game plan. And it, but the Taekwondo background kind of takes the punching away from him, so I think he should really start focusing on punching. Then he's going to be a complete animal. Again, Villa there tries that switch body kick. Distance is closed by La Rosa. Stop. I feel like Villa is fatiguing just a little bit. His kicks aren't popping off as fast as they were in the first round, and La Rosa is able to close that gap and get on the inside. It's kicks take a lot of power, you know. He's getting tired now, you know. Yeah, it, it a, little bit, it's a little bit slow to get back up to the feet as well, it has to be said. And there's a punch. But yeah, well, that was not really seen. super powerful. But it's nice to set up. Well, a wry smile from La Rosa. For Villa right now, yeah. could throw a one-two with a liver kick. So oh, right, oh, left, nice left. Oh. Nice standing Sayanagi. Wow, great ground and pound. La Rosa got some power. Yeah, I don't see too many uh, turning standing Sayanagi's <laughs> in Karate Combat, it has to be said. 45 <laughs> seconds left on the clock. Still all to play for in this opening bout. Nine more matches coming your way this evening. This is where La Rosa's got to keep the pressure. Can't let him rest. And immediately counter that kick again. 
Don't hold and hit. Don't hold and hit. Fight. Good warning from Mark Goddard there. You cannot uh, control with one hand and strike with the other. They've got to be clean individual strikes. Final 10 seconds, though. This one's probably going to go to the judges' scorecards, and it is going to be a close one, but that's a lovely body kick from La Rosa to close out his account here. Oof. And again. Oh, oh, oh, that was a nice little whip. <laughs> I was like, little right tornado on. kick right at the end there. It's a close fight. Great Very close fight. Guys. Yes. One of the things you'll see us talk about perhaps a little bit throughout the evening is the possibility of sudden death rounds. Fourth sudden death rounds if they need them, but we'll cross that bridge if and when we come to them. Let's take a look at some of the replays from that third round, gents. Boom, there's that left kick. What two? A left and a right kick in one move. Hey, look at this. That was that side kick. kick. <laughs> That's what's so exciting about Taekwondo stylists. Oh, uh, man. They can throw kicks from every angle, every position. It's amazing. Here comes the and throw. Beautifully done by La Rosa. Well, I think this was the better ground and pound out of every round was that, was that last sequence there. Here it is. Throw and then amazing ground and pound. Yeah, let's take a look this. at the throw here. Grabbing Just, the hand. Yeah, hips underneath. Beautifully didn't, didn't done. Didn't plant his shoulder through him, but we'll, we'll let him get away with that. Bonk, bonk. Oh, oh straight on. Boom. He's furious. You watch the x ray. You have a decision. Well, they're taking a bit of time. Well, Pit side. Getting this one calculated. Could be a sudden death right to Whoa. think. Right? Oh, no, they're calling. Mark Goddard is calling them down. We have got. A judge's decision. <laughs> Got to say, though, this could be a very close one, decided almost entirely by that third round. Okay. What a fight that was, ladies and gentlemen, to begin the evening. Our winner, by split decision, coming out of the blue corner. So a good win for Damien Villa. He squares his karate combat account at one win and one loss and gets his initial revenge. Tough debut for Maximiliano La Rosa, but a good fight nonetheless. Let's take a look at some of the stats from that bout. You can see all even on the strikes. The punch is very clearly going to La Rosa, as we expected with the taekwondo background. The kick's going to Villa, and it's got to be said, the kicks in karate combat do take precedence. Guys, give us your uh, give us your final thoughts on that opening bout tonight. Uh, overall, a good performance from Damien Villa, but a few holes still, perhaps. I would say his hands. If he just works on his hands, I mean, he's going to be a little weapon. I mean, his legs oh, are freaking crazy good. So setting it up, legs, uh, kicks with hands, I think that will be a big improvement. 100%. I think La Rosa should have kept the pressure on earlier in the fight. I know he kind of kept it there in the, in the third round, but more throughout the fight, I think he would have gotten the W. Yep. Yep, indeed. Yeah, still nothing to, for him to be too disappointed about. A good, a good debut for him here at Karate Combat. Uh, we have got a fantastic women's bout coming up next. It's time for you to go ahead and meet one half of that. This is Christina Cavacapolo. I began my career on this stage and trained vigorously for years as a young girl. All of the practice, the discipline, flexibility, coordination, it came with success and failure, like everything else in life. Karate is much kinder to me than ballet was. Maybe it's because I perfected my form and fluidity through dance. But I was able to transition smoothly. I do not miss the constant throbbing pain in my feet. It all started when I went to pick up my friend from karate class after I was done with ballet. The sensei would always keep them longer, so I would watch. The respect, the lessons. There was something so intriguing about martial arts that I knew I had to leave ballet and become a student of karate. My life isn't all about punching and kicking. I have a very artistic side of me that most people don't know. I 
I love to go out. I like nice dinners and parties, and I love the history of the city I live in. There is so much beauty and magic in my culture. Everyone has heard the stories of Greek mythology, the gods, the goddesses. As a person who admires these stories and the beautiful artwork that came with it, I always felt like I could be a daughter of Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war, who was the daughter of Zeus. She was the wisest, most courageous, and most resourceful of the Olympian gods. The biggest difference that I had to get used to when switching from dance to karate was that in dance, it was mainly dominated by women. In martial arts, it's a man's world. At the beginning, it was tough for me to get used to training with men who are bigger than me. Now, I see it as a huge advantage. I do not mind that people may underestimate a former dancer turned to karate champion. They can underestimate me all they want. The truth is, it doesn't matter to me. I pay the critics no mind. I'm looking forward to getting to the pit. I'm looking forward to bringing victory back home to represent Greece, hopefully as their first Greek female karate combat champion. So that is Christina Cavacopolo. She is one half of this women's strawweight contest against uh, Filipino K. Assessor. Uh, and Bass, K. Assessor, you know, she's got the same boxing coach as Manny Pacquiao. This, this woman is very, very dedicated. Uh, in towards working towards her karate combat debut. Oh, and especially if you look at her schedule, what she does, she gets up at four, and then she works. She works out from five till six thirty. Then she has her normal job. She's a caregiver from seven thirty in the morning till five thirty in the afternoon. Then again, she trains from six forty-five of six o'clock to seven forty-five. I mean, this woman is unbelievable. And then she says she loves combinations. She's equally good in her hands and in her feet. And well, you say that already. Working with Manny Pacquiao's boxer, that's gotta help. Yeah, but uh, you know, Stephen, you think about the women's strawweight division at Karate Combat, you have to think Christina Cavacopolo, uh, currently undefeated. She's very, very tough. She's the type of fighter that doesn't back down. She's looking to throw her knees out there and possibly look for the takedown. Oh, and happy birthday, by the oh, way, Christina. Yes. Hey. Happy birthday, happy indeed, birthday. indeed, to Panthera. Uh, let's go ahead and meet these two fighters in a bit more detail, Christina Cavacopolo and Kai Assessor. Every fight is important for me. If I come here to fight, it's always important. It wasn't an easy journey before I came here. I'm going to pressure them. That's going to be a surprise for her. I like to get dirty sometimes. I will dominate it. At some point, she will break. She'll be like, whoa. I am better and more technical. I have more experience. I might be small. Terrible. I like the fact that she's confident. She'll not make it because I'm here. She knows that I am going to win. I know that all this hard work will pay off. Sessor makes her debut here at Karate Combat, striding very confidently uh, out to the pit here. You heard from Bass in the, the build-up, a, a really hectic, dedicated schedule uh, does this 30-year-old have. She's got a Shotokan background, but obviously a lot of uh, work in boxing and even some knife fighting in her background as well. So hopefully and fully up for this full contact environment. Out of the red corner, Christina Cavacopolo! Christina Kavakopoulou, no stranger whatsoever to the Karate Combat Pit. This is going to be the third time we're seeing her. She, of course, took that unanimous decision win over Fabiola Esquivel back in Season 2 and a brilliant TKO stoppage over Jessica de Paula Linares uh, earlier in Season 3 last year. Very fired up. She's, of course, got a teammate on the card a little bit later in Nikos Gidakos. 
And these two tend to feed off each other, so let's see if Christina can get the Greeks off to uh, a winning start this evening. Well, if she can land a punch like Hidakos did <laughs> <laughs> last time out, he knocked him out. One shot, boom. One hit of quitters, baby. Here is your tele-tape for Kai Assessa, the Filipino warrior, 30 years old, making her debut here tonight, standing five feet tall. She's going to be a little bit shorter than her opponent this evening. And this is your red corner, undefeated at 2-0. Panthera, Christina Kavakopoulou. Interestingly, a little bit taller, a little bit longer legs, uh, but considerably shorter reach in the arm. So, interesting proportional difference there. Boom, boom. Here we go, man. Let's go. I like, I like the slide decision. down. I love the slide down, and I, <laughs> I wish this would have been around, you know, to wrap up my career with like one of these fights. How cool oh, would that yeah, be? Yeah, that would be awesome. Oh. Here we go, baby. Round one. Scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen to sign up for the Karate Combat DAO airdrop. Be among the first 10,000 KC36 viewers to sign up for your chance to get additional Karate bonus tokens after Oof. the initial launch. There is no purchase required. Nice combination out by Christina. Landed a big right. Ooh, both looking for the, the low kick there. Yeah, Sessa pressing forward, center of the pit very nicely there. Should mention your referee is Wayne Spinola for this bout. Your typical three threes on the clock. Nice low kick from Kay. Now, Kava Kapoli with a smile on her face, but uh, a lot of work still to be done in this bout. Feeling our process. Yeah, a little cut kick on the inside Ooh. there. Of course, remember the karate combat rule set, you cannot uh, low kick between the hip and the knee. So you're either going to see kicks to the body or kicks to the calf. Nice. Or to the head. Nice closing of the gap from Christina and oh, Tango. Nice. nice little throw. Oh, Very a, smart there yeah, from Assessor to hold her. There's a cross between. Uh, There's the blitz again. And uh, an Uchi Mata and a uh, little uh, Ochi. There we had a knee. Uh, he's that goody. Christina seems very, very calm. Her, her shuffle one, two, her closing of the gap is so quick. You see, perhaps the more typical Shotokan guard from Assessor here. Nice stomping front kick. Panthera with the higher, more Western boxing style guard. Nice Ooh, right hand. Oh, yeah. so there's a second and a third. Wow. Good combinations. Nice one. Oh, oh, oh, and oh the oh. right and the left. Oh, great accuracy. And great. A nice takedown. Could she get to her feet to land some ground and pound? I mean, great power too for that weight class. I mean, that was she was wow. connecting. Yeah, it was the fact that both those punches landed so cleanly. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, I look forward to seeing those on the replays. Christina knows she's got to hurt. Will she? Will she capitalize on that? She needs to keep pushing forward. A little bit more feints out of her to get to get uh, K to react and then counter off of those reactions. There's that shuffle one too. Work out, work out. Your hands are free. Work out. Oh, oh well, lovely nice. take down Sweet again. Leg, the, Johnny. Yeah, the judo in full effect from Kava Kapolu. Ten seconds. Look Woo. forward to seeing if we can get that uh, Osoto played back as well. Osoto Giri. Wow. Yeah, first round in the books. Undoubtedly, guys, going the way of Christina Kavak. 100 yes. percent, man. She looks so clean and so calm out there. It's unbelievable. It shows her experience being out there competing in front of a lot of people. But uh, I, her, her techniques were definitely the cleanest out of both. Nice right hand, landed it like three or four times clean. Yeah, let's take a look back at the replay here. I'm sure we're going to see some of those. This was an initial good bit of work from Assessor to press forward. But here we go, right over the oh. top, and immediately the left wow. as well. Boom. And again. This was uh, the one of the takedowns. Yeah, she had three, at least three very good takedowns in this bout. 
not able to land any ground and pound, but uh, <laughs> she's waiting about the hair. The hair. The ground. <laughs> Ooh, that's a that's a high level collar tie. <laughs> <laughs> Now straight back down into the pit they come. Okay, ladies, ready? Fight! Another three on the clock here. Watch the back of her head. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop, stop. Back up, back up. Watch the back of the head. Go back of the head, okay? okay here we go. Fight. What advice would you give to uh, Assessor to, to try and claw this second round back? I, I, I think uh, stop throwing punches, body shots, left to the body, right cross to the head, oh, you yeah. know, start working combination, but attacking. It's almost like she's constantly counterfighting. She needs to take off. I like the fact that Christina is taking her hands up top, but also giving her something to think about down low, looking for the sweeps as well. See, constantly attacking those legs for sweeps and trips. Yeah, good attempt to knee by Assessor as well. That was nice, yes. Okay, ready? Fight. Haven't seen those used too cleanly as of yet. Ooh, oh, straight to the shit. Yeah, Cavacopolo just eats that one. Oh, nice right hand by Christina. Good ground. Little short punches. Okay. Well, that was a little bit messy, but it's going to result in a takedown for Cavacopolo. Simple little movements that she did, just that jab throwing it out there. You know, very nice, very good in control there, Christina. Work out, work out. Good some body shots. Now, perhaps seeing some of that boxing influence from the Cecil, but you you got to say, in the kind of open phase boxing, it's all Cavacopolo, really. Yes. Oh, yeah. Kay's got to watch out because Christina doesn't mind being that close because, as you can tell, she's looking for the trips and, and taking her down pretty much every time. Would perhaps like to see a bit more head movement from both these ladies. We're going to close out the second round very shortly here, and a lot of holding and punching from Assessor of the Uniform. Let's see the referee jump in on that a bit quicker. Christina's just laughing. Just about 30 seconds left in this second round here. Cavacopolo with the center of the pit for the most part. Assessor trying to move around on the outside. But work rate dropping a little bit from the Greek here. Yep. 10 seconds. Work out, work out. Oh, again, she's going to look for uh, that Asoto. I feel like the, the Filipino the warrior kind of took the, that second round there. She might More have, aggressive. because yes, Christina is taking the gas of the battle, of the battle, well, the foot of the battle, so to say, <laughs> taking the gas off. Yeah, just a little bit of a lower work rate costing her. Let's go ahead and uh, listen in to uh, both of these corners and see if we can garner some advice. Okay, so we can talk over, we can understand it. The, the girl that you see with the red hair in the Cavacopalo corner, she's a mixed martial artist. And Christina trained a lot with her. So I, said, I told her, I said, are we going to see takedowns? She says, oh yeah, we're going to see takedowns now. <laughs> Yeah, and you got to say, we... you know, I, I love the intent to, to throw those techniques as well. I mean, she, you know, she's genuinely going for a whole different series Fight. of trips and throws. Oh, yep. yeah. Very impressive. You see her grow every time she comes here. Good low cap kick there from the Filipino warrior. So third round on the clock, potentially all still to play for here. It's Assessor with the center, opens up a nice body kick. Again, some kind of dirty boxing-ish. Cavacopolo is going to essentially out wrestle her once more.
that's why I always say set those kicks up with punches because now she got countered when she threw the right calf kick. Pace definitely slowing for both these fighters now. A lot of energy expended in that first six minutes. But I mean, if you're Calvin Capolo, you know, you, you've got to start throwing here. Oh, you got to push the fight now, just to make sure. Because if round number two went... I think she, I think she heard you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Again, another yeah. big takedown here. She's keeping that forward pressure. She's just gonna do something with it now. Yeah, pump and stop pumping that jab out, find that range. So just approaching the final minute. Very shortly of this bow, Kavakapolu opens up again and they're going to tie up once more. Well, Kavakapolu resulting to some blocking there and trying to push Assessor off. But really now, this is the time for someone to go. All the way, you got to start. Barreling forward again, spinning oh. kick and that one lands. Exactly nice. what Kavakapolu needed. And the accuracy on that right across the cheek. Back up. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. He's got to take the win out of yourselves on that one. I mean, you know, that's easily the most significant moment of the round. 30 oh, yeah. seconds left here. If Assessor is going to uh, stay in this one, she's just got to pull the trigger. Somebody's got to go. Come on, come on. Come on. They need to listen to you, Stephen. Somebody Let's close go. That gap. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Closing seconds of the come bout on. here. Ten seconds. Come on. Uh, a little low kick on the outside. Good shots again from Cavacapolo. But this one's going to do it. And uh, a show of respect from both these ladies, but perhaps a little bit frustrating for them getting towards the end there. I think so. I think they, you know, they were both, I think, looking to counter each other. So they were just waiting on each other to go first, and nobody went first. At that point, 10 seconds left, you got to go for it. You got to go all out. You got to close that gap and you got to put those hands and feet together. Let's see that spinning kick it. We're going to see. I'm looking forward to that. Well, that was a nice body kick from Assessor, but that was really one of the um, only significant moments of the bout. She got out wrestled on this takedown again. And some good clubbing shots over Beautiful. the top. Beautiful. Yeah, caught with her chin yep. up. I mean, Kava Cabolo looking for the, the break there. I think here we comes the kick. Yep. Here we go, sets up. Oh, oh. beautifully done. Yeah. The ball Ooh, of the, the foot. Sole of the foot, indeed. Got decision. And we have an official decision. Everybody loves a good old-fashioned spin kick. Yes, yes, yes. Good fight, ladies. Good job. Good work. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for these gladiators here tonight. And we have a winner by unanimous decision out of the red corner, Christina Panthera Cavacopolo. That's what we thought. Yeah, so as expected, Christina Cavacopolo remains undefeated here at Karate Combat. <laughs> Oh, she's come up to thank the uh, thank the corner of KSSA and uh, had to go looking for them. Nice show of respect there. So guys, let's have a look at uh, some of the hey action fans, from that fight. Uh, Kavakabobu started official. very, very strong and then took the foot off the gas just a little bit.
Yeah, that was the whole thing. I think if round number two, if uh, Christina would have kept going, you know, she would have gotten all three rounds, I think. Right now, I think it was two to one. But you know, this is for Assessoros. It's new to her. Oh yeah, Christina, you know? she was the definitely the more aggressive, the cleaner fighter of the both, so she got that W, man. Uh, I'd like to see a little more action in the third round. Yeah, me too, but you know, hey, can't always get what you want. They made a song about that. <laughs> yeah, we do enjoy our women's strawweight division here. Kava Kapolu, uh, that could potentially be putting her in a title shot contention. That would be something. Yeah. I mean, she looked, every time we see her, she is better. And now she starts with the throws, the, her boxing, she worked on her boxing. That's a phenomenal job. Yeah, moving swiftly on, third bout this evening. Uh, we've got a great bantamweight contest coming your way. Uh, Bass, the first half of that, it's, it's Abdul Assam Amagnassi versus uh, Calvis Kalnins. And uh, Calvis Kalnins, you know, what kind of accolade can you say more than the guy fought in the last Olympics? He fought in the last Olympics, and check this out. He's 61 kilograms, and the Olympics is 67 and up. And he, he became number six, but that's a big difference. That's like almost a 15 pound difference. So he said that he already beat his opponent once, but I was in point karate. And he's got great time and great movement. He's looking for a hand uh, to lock the cross hook combination. That's his combination that he loves, and he probably going to land it, he said. Yeah, but you talk about his opponent, uh, Abdel Essam Amak Nasi. Uh, this guy's very, very good as well. He's got a lot of extremely high level sport karate competition. He's got experience in the pit as well, uh, and loads of support back home in Morocco. Oh, 100%. I mean, he's got, he's, you know, he's known as a great kicker, but he's been working really, really hard on his boxing. Uh, he says his opponent's fast, but he is faster, and he's going to be looking for that first round KO. And look at this at yeah. home, what they did for him. That's it. Uh, getting a mural back in uh, in his hometown is Abdul Assam Amaknasi. Great to see all the international competitors get that much support here at Karate Combat. Huge night of fights here for KC36. Let's go ahead. This is your head to head for the third bout this evening. Abdul Assam Amaknasi taking on Calvis Kaunins. My name is Abdis Salam Amiknasi. I'm from Morocco. I am Kalvis Kalninch from Jalgava, Latvia. Now we'll be fighting with him in full contact. I am much faster, much better takedowns. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome tonight fighting out of the blue corner. Calvis, the devious Calvin. We welcome to the pit for the first time, Latvian Kolvis Kalnins, five-time medalist at the European Karate Championships, competed in the Olympics, uh, as Bass mentioned, at a heavier weight class, has actually already fought his opponent in sport karate tonight and uh, emerged victorious. And his opponent, out of the red corner, Abdusalam Amik Nasi. And we welcome from Morocco, Abdusalam Amik Nasi. Has fought once before here at Karate Combat. Was vic yeah victorious back in uh, the first event of season three, July of last year. Took unanimous decision win over Nicholas Lukac. You know, and Adam Kovac, our president of the company, he said that this guy could be the best kicker there is. It's quite a high accolade. That's, that's <laughs> something high, so... He, he knows we've got Raymond Daniels in this, this, this uh, exactly. uh, league, right? OK, in this weight class. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tail of the tape for Culvis Devious Kalnins, 31 years old, making his promotional debut tonight at Karate Combat, standing five foot six tall. He's going to have a substantial disadvantage in the arms and leg reach, as you're going to see in a moment. And there we have Abdel Assam Amek Nasi, that 1-0 record at 25 years old. And look at that, 35-inch leg reach, 34-and-a-half-inch arm reach. That is an absolutely whopping advantage for him, a full six inches in the legs. 
And he's a super good kicker, so <laughs> well, let's see what's going to happen. Well, let's see what game plan uh, Colvis Coleman's has got uh, planned for him. Enter the pit. Abdesalam's looking for that first round KO. Let's see if it lasts all three rounds. Mark Goddard is your referee for this third bout. Guys, bout. Ready. Ready. Ready. Karate Combat is excited to announce that we'll be back in Orlando at the back lot of Universal Studios Saturday, December 17th for Karate Combat 37 Live, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are on sale now at karate.com uh, karate forward slash tickets. Calvis with some heavy leg kicks. Wow, and fast too. Oh, so yeah. There's going to be a kicking competition here. <laughs> well, let's see. I like the speed already from Colnins. Calvin seems he's a lot of feints from Calvin. Ooh, oof. look at spin and miss. For Calvin to see that. Some nice cheeky little shots on the inside. A lot of upper body oh, movement, trying to duck and roll. One thing that seems to slow down a kicker is good old leg kicks. That's it, you know. And if I was, I mean, I see, you know, and especially if this is going to hurt him. You know, have a more open stance. Point your your front leg toes, 45 degree angle to the side. Nice up kicks oh, from yeah. McNassie, and I love the chasing work from Colnins. Yeah, crossed that land there. That was nice. Oh yeah, caught the kick, took him down. Guys, you talk about the leg kick show, slowing good kickers down. What's the difference in, in impact when you receive a, a calf, a kick to the calf versus one to the, you know, the, the quad or the thigh? There's little, there's there's less padding there, less muscle, so it goes straight to the bone. It's like shin pinching the meat between his shin and your shin, and that's what makes your your your function. That's what moves you. It's your calves, your feet, and if that dies, that goes dead. You've heard of drop foot. That happens a lot, where you get hit in the leg and it goes numb, and you can't even, you can't, that foot doesn't function. So, calves, uh, low calf kicks are definitely, man, a game changer. Ooh, Ooh spinning hook kick just goes missing. Lovely timing from Coolins to close the distance, take all the power out of that. And I like from Abignasi, he was throwing a jab to the body. He should have gone follow it up with that right high kick. Oh, yeah. That's the second leg he's caught of Abdassalam's. Took him, took him down. Oh. Ooh. Oh, nice. A counter. Beautiful Let's counter there by Col Stop. Colton. Stop. Um, McNassie was thinking about the hip throw, perhaps. <laughs> about 40 seconds left in this opening round. A lot of action from these bantamweights. Beautiful stick and move. Looking for that extended step jab. Oh, look at that. Good Tr head kick. Yeah, trying to come all the way from the outside up and over that lead hand. That inside low kick is a little dangerous, right? <laughs> yeah, we talked about that earlier. Spinning back fist attempt. I think he wants to let everybody know that he's the better kicker. <laughs> yeah. Man. Great Good first, first round in the books. A lot of action from both these guys. Probably going to need some of those replays to pass this out up here in the booth. Well, let's take a look back. Talk us through this. Big high kick, didn't pull it through. That's why he could get caught and used for a takedown. It seems to be Calvis's game plan leading in. Catching kicks and low calf kicks. And if you notice, later in the round, it kind of stopped uh, Abdassalam from throwing as many kicks. So mm -hmm. it will put him in a box for sure. Smart. You know, attacking the legs, we were talking about these knife fighters, right? They attack the hand in where yes. you, which you hold the, the weapon. And they cut your hand up, so you drop the weapon. And that's what he's doing there also. He stops his kicking by, by kicking him. <laughs> that's right, Stop attacking those hand. legs. Second round, going to get it underway here. Bit of gamesmanship, perhaps, from Colnins. He did not take the stool during that break. Ooh, Ooh there it is again. And it's a heavy kicks. So Colnins again with the center of the pit here. 
trying to oh. find his way in with some searching punches. Uh, I like the level change that he's giving to that jab. Yeah, beautiful. He leans all the way in and yeah. makes it long. Bang. Makes that two a little bit more powerful as well when he comes up with it. But it's kind of deceiving when you jab and kind of duck down a little bit uh -huh. and then come back up high. That's what I said with that Nussi should do. He threw it to the body, but then follow it up with a cross rider high kick. Well, Amagnassi tried that front kick, but Conan's leaning into those hooks. Oh, nice right hand by Calvis. Do you feel that Amagnassi is uh, effectively using his, his fairly substantial reach advantage yet? No, not at all. Like I said, first round, I feel like, you know, Abdassalam, you know, tried to use that, his kicks to keep his opponent at bay, but he kept getting caught. Yeah. And not only that, it's harder to pick that leg up when it's being constantly attacked with that leg kick. Yeah. And again, he got kicked there. I mean, Ooh. look at that. Beautiful. Oh, that was a little high. That was a nice combo there. Uh, Nasi. Well, they're trying to fire the punches back and forth. Kicks falling a little bit by the wayside in these exchanges now. He's going to feel that tomorrow, I can tell you that. Those calf kicks, they're hard. Oh. Again, getting work done up top. Just over a minute left in this second round. And also with the calf kick, you know, if at that moment uh, Albert Nasi decides to lift up his foot and then he gets kicked, that could be game over. If the muscle is relaxed and then oh, yeah. that shin with the power that the Kalnis has. <laughs> Less than a minute left. Oh, Kalnis really throwing some feints in now, but he eats another good shot. Strong. Ties up in the center. Oh, lovely little Uchimata just off balance is in, but Stop. not quite enough. That a little squirrel, you remember at the weigh in? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, well, we might get a shot, but uh, Leota Machida just showed up in the house, I think. Oh, here he is. I was under the impression he was not coming tonight, but it'd uh, be nice to see him ringside supporting Bruno Souza. Final 10 seconds of round number two. Slugfest again here. Oh, nice trip behind from Colness. Very, very slick Stop. indeed from that over-under grip. That was a good second round. It's a good second round, but not a lot of real clean punches and kicks land. No, although those calf kicks the whole time, oh, man. they're landing because Collins, he's giving it to him. And I feel that Calvis doesn't really care where he hits him on the shin. Outside, inside, directly into the shin, Ooh, he's just well, going for it. That was a very clean right hand from uh, Coolman's there, we got uh, the first of our replays. A lot of work done up top, the right again landing for the Latvian. I would throw, because he's pulling his head back, and Magnusius throw a big left hook with a cross to the body. That would be a great combination for him to throw. That's right, because when you lean back, the body's yep. open. Full on. Yeah, guys, so if you had to uh, pick who's ahead so far through two rounds, which way are you going? I'm going Calvis. Yes, me too. Calvis, Calvis, yep. yep. Well, that's, uh, you heard it from uh, Vass and Wonderboy. They've got the Latvian up potentially so far. Of course, it's the judges who are going to make the decision, but Amak Nassi going to have to put his foot to the floor in this third round, potentially. Absalom's being a little more aggressive this round. He feels like he's got to probably get a KO to win this fight. Uh, yep, that's it's corner. Cool. If I was just corner, I would have told him that. He starts taking, not taking the kicks anymore. That's a sign. Ooh. A little check kick on the inside from Amak Nassi. Colvis trying to keep his guard up. Nice blitz from the Moroccan. Closed the distance very well, got back out again. Here, throwing some hands. And Carlos was talking about the hook cross, and he did land it a few times. <laughs> yeah, that right hand from uh, Kulvis Kulnins has, has really found the, the chin several times. Was a good counter from Marmak Nasi, he was just did a connect, but it was nice. Stop. Uh, fairly evenly matched in those uh, gripping exchanges. Halfway point of this third round. 
Well, well, well. Calvis is looking to counter his blitz, Abdassalam's blitz. As soon as he blitz forward, he's going to sit down to that punch and throw that right hand. Ooh, body kick. Here we go. Stop. Stop. Don't punch your knee. Understand? Be careful. Ready? Turn around. Turn around. Fight. So a warning for the Moroccan. Holding and throwing a knee, not allowed. Yeah, that's a, a good point. You, you can't clinch and throw the knees. It's got to be a clean strike. Stop. Latvian Stop. looking for the trips on the inside and outside. Woo, last minute. Stop. I think now she's holding his belt. <laughs> yeah, got to be a little bit careful there. It was on the blind oh, side of nice. my god, but that's good work from Colmins. That's that counter punch I was talking about. As soon as Abdassalam blitzes, Calvin's going to lower his stance and sit down on that right hand. Yeah, it's been one of the best weapons for him. Again, they're going to tie up. Stop. Oh, nice uppercut. Again, let's throw. <laughs> Amagnasi again Stop. is uh, holding that belt there. It's smart, keeps the hips away, control the hips, you control the legs. Nice oh, one. Oh, the right again. There's another one. Fainted yeah. his head out of the way beautifully as well. And again, the cross hook, he was talking about it in the interviews. Well, we are going to go to a judge's decision in this third bout. Could Latvian... Carl, uh, Calvis Colnins have handed Abdelassem Amagnasi his first loss in the pit. It's going to be close, guys. I think so, too. Um, Colnins might have gotten this fight. Let's take a look back at some of the replays from that third and final round. A little bit slow to start, but they really opened up towards the end, the Latvian in particular. And the, the Latvian also, the way he moves backwards and still strikes, you yes. know, it's, it's a really great technique to have and the shots just coming over the top of everything shorter fighter but still managing to Boom. get up there well straight down the pipe yeah big left hook with a cross to the body i'm telling you most it of the time there. It, and it always happens with tall fighters because oh, tall yeah. fighters always lean back on headshots and i go go for the body dude rip the body long left to doink please Solar flurry to the solar plexus. Ooh, we got a winner. Here we go. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by unanimous decision. Abdusalam Amagnasi. Whoa. Well, contrary to uh, perhaps the belief in some of the booth here, Abdelassam Amagnasi, your winner by unanimous decision here over debutante Calvis Kalnins. Unsurprisingly, very, very happy indeed. So, guys, give us your reflections on uh, that bout. Uh, Carlos Kalnin, so, you know, potentially we thought he did enough there with the shots and the calf kicks. I thought so too with the calf, yeah, calf kicks, and he landed the crosses and the hooks that he was talking about in the interviews. I agree, man. First, I thought the first two rounds went to Calvis, but he did let off a little bit in that third round, and maybe that's what the judges were looking at. At that third round, I saw, I think that Abdassalam uh, definitely, I think, added more to that in that third round. Maybe that's why he pulled it off. But I figured Calvin had had it. Yeah, Abdullah Samar Magnassi is remaining undefeated here, going back to Morocco with uh, an awful lot of support. Uh, we've got a, a, another really exciting welterweight bout coming up next. It's Nikos Gadakos taking on uh, Kenji Grion, Greece versus France. Uh, Kenji Grion, let's, let's talk about him, Bas. Uh, debutant here tonight, uh, very interesting fighter. 
Yeah, okay, now this is going to be crazy, okay? I'm going to tell you what he said. He says his opponent boxing is not that good, and his game plan is this. What? Movement, level changes, feints, then takedowns, real and fake ones, staying outside the range, set up headshots with body shots, set up body shots with headshots. He's going to be all over the place, loves the takedown again, and he loves ground and pound. That's what, as a fighter, if you can pull that all off, you're going to win the fight, <laughs> right? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, but uh, he's facing Nikos Gadakos, the F-16 from Greece. Um, very, very experienced fighter here at Karate 100%. Combat. We, we've seen him several times, and he's coming off a massive uh, KO victory over uh, Gilmarcos de Bastos Jr. last time we saw him. So very, very tough opponent. He's looking to do it again tonight. He's going to push the pace. He's going to look to throw those knees, and of course, to get that KO in this fight. Yeah, really exciting bout here in the welterweight division. Let's go straight ahead, meet these two men. This is Nikos Gadakos and Kenji Griol. Whoa. My name is Nikolaos Gidakos, and I'm from Greece. I like to speak in the pit, you know. My name is Kenji Guyan. I'm a world champion in Karate Shotokan. It's my first fight in a Karate Combat. I want a spectacular fight. I don't uh, see who is my opponent. But uh, for all of my fights, I give my life and my heart for this. This fight is uh, strategic and uh, explosive. Uh, the big problem, it's me. It's uh, one win more, nothing else for me. You want a C4? C. Is that, uh, is that yours? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Take it from him. Is Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our fourth fight of the evening. Fighting out of the blue corner, welcome Kenji Grio! And we welcome for the first time to Karate Combat Kenji Grion, 32 years old, from France. A lot of very decorated sport karate achievements for him. World champion, uh, individual and teams, European champion, French champion. Uh, you know, wasn't particularly complimentary about uh, some of his opponents' uh, striking capabilities. You can see, though, he's a big human being in this welterweight division. And his opponent, welcome out of the red corner, Nichols F-16, Gadako! Welcome back for the third time. Nikos Gudakos from Greece carrying a lot of confidence into this one, as we mentioned, uh, that fantastic KO victory against Gilmarcos de Bastos Jr. back in July of last year in season three. He did before that uh, get taken out by Davy Donner, but a good win over Williams Carino all the way back in 2020 in season two. So doing well here so far, two and one. Again, very tall for this weight class, but uh, a little bit thicker is Kenji Grion, perhaps. Look at that for a vista as Paris yeah. burns in the background. I asked him, I said, Kenji, how can you get that name? And he goes, well, my father was a karate teacher, so that's why I think he called me Kenji. <laughs> Kenji. Kenji. Oh, massive reach advantage in the legs for uh, Kenji Grion. Started training at eight. Wow, eight Judo, age. karate, soccer, he does everything. Let's go, Lost eight MMA, years old. Lost five pride fighting championships, I mean. Uh, Nikos Gadakos, tail of the tape for him, 34 years old. A little bit of the uh, slightly elder of the two fighters here. Going to be giving up some reach. Whoa. This could be a knockout. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Woo! Ready, sir? Very Spike. excited. Wayne Spinola is your referee for this one. Our and event tonight is brought to you I by C4. Ignite your power with C4. I yep. like Kenji's feints right there, the in and out movement, you trying see? to draw and it out. That's what he said he was going to do for yes. the game, but I love it when people do say Ooh. something and do it. Oh! Oh! oh. 
talk about pressure straight off the bat. Kenji Grion bringing it to Nikos Gadakos in the opening 30 seconds here. Yeah, Spin Grion kick. He right said, into a flying kick. That's the same, right? I mean, who does that? And he said, it's, it's cool because my opponent doesn't know anything about me because there's no footage out there. He said, and I know more about him. Oh, oh man. A lot of power in that body kick. Heavy kick. Oh, lateral drop throw Ooh. from Kenji Grion ends up on top. Oof. Kenji definitely looking like the, the, the, the stronger of the two. The, the, yeah, the, the kind of just, uh, just slightly more well built. <laughs> I love it when fighters simply faint. I mean, it's so <laughs> effective. Oh, Ooh. look at that. Coming a lot of distance. That's uh, backhand coming through. Nice kick there by Gidakos. Yeah, Gidakos is just trying to settle back into this one, standing very upright here. A bit more of a traditional boxing stance for him. Plus, he knows, you know, if he can land that cross, you know, he just needs to wait for a right moment. Yeah, I mean, how, you know, it brings a lot of confidence when you know you do have that knockout power. Mm -hmm. Well, tying up here. He's having a hard lock. time finding that right hand because of Kinji's movement, right? Very unorthodox, especially when you're fainting constantly. You never know when they're going to come in, so it's hard to counter that. Exactly. That's why I love it. And the level changes. Good low kick from Grillon. I like that. Oh, good front kick. Ooh. A little bit to the pelotas or not? I don't know. <laughs> I think it was a little high. On the hip, right? Yeah, Maybe I think it was hip. pulled it up. Sometimes that happens all you pull the cup up ah. that way. A zombie walking around here. Here's the replay. Yeah, quick replay of that clash. Let's have a look. Wow, looks like it's more to the hip to me. Yeah. yeah. You ready, sir? Okay, here we go. Ready? And there's a lot of fainting going on. Minute left in this opening round. Ooh. Wheel kick goes awry. Ooh. That was a strong oh, kick. Oh, to the oh and this could oh, be an injury. Man. Oh. oh. Let's see. Oh. Not sure if that's a knee or if that was just a shin shot. Oh, oh cool. Creon's going to pounce on it. Oh, you can't. No. Oh. <laughs> He's going to go straight to work on that lead leg again. Oh, yeah. There and it you is. see Gadakos. Steven, you mentioned the possibility of a dead leg if that lands cleanly. But also what he did there, he did a calf kick, and then the second kick was a front kick. You see, that is thinking. Right, thinking low, and then yeah. he changes it up. I love it. 25 seconds left, Grion's going to get stuck back in here, and I don't think I don't think he wants these tie-ups. Kinji is going hard for that KO. He's trying to get it done. Gidako switching immediately to Southpaw. Well, now throwing kicks back with that leg. 10 seconds left. Oh. Couple of spinning back kicks. What a good round for Grion. Oh. Again, just backing him up. Whoa. Can he do this for three rounds, though? Because oh. that's a lot of energy he's throwing out. And now that he knows his opponent's low calf is hurt, he's going to go back there every oh. time. I mean, you know, you, you just kind of felt the thud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when those went through. You can tell by the way he sat down. Did you see it? He's still hurt. Well, and I think what, it, what happened was uh, my man Gadakos was sitting down on the right hand, so he put all of his weight on that front foot at the same time he took that right. shot. Well, let's see if we can get a look at it on the replays here. Base. Oh! Oh, wow. Ooh. What the shit? That Golly. has buckled the knee on the inside. It wouldn't surprise me if we're looking at some form of ligament damage for MCL. Nikos Gadakos. Yeah, that, that, that lateral movement, as you just said, Stephen, that MCL taking a hell of a hammering. There's a spinning back kick to the hamstring. I never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> He's still fighting. He still wants to get after it. I mean, we know Gadakos is tough, but uh, could be a bit of an uphill struggle for him here. Let's see if he comes out fighting Southpaw or he puts that lead leg in jeopardy again. Aye. Oh, he's switching sides. Yeah, yeah. smart. Now the inside low is not going to work. It's just shin on shin. Yeah, a little snapping low kick from Gadakos. Oh, and he's got oh, just, back. Yeah, just by default, his. Oh, and he's chasing him Beautifully here. Beautifully movement backwards, not in a straight line, but Grillon, he's doing phenomenal. You see, Gadakos really has to think about starting in Southpaw. That's why oh, I think. Oh, that was nice. Gave one of his own. That's and why I think it's the importance of being able to switch sides. Right? Taking less damage. Ooh, oh, one. man, that looked like it hurt him. Oh, yeah. Well, Gadakos uh, giving as good as he gets here in the opening minute of round number two. Anything oh. you could do, I could do better. That's what he was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the damage on the back of Gadakos as well. Oh, oh it's landing 
with that. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Hey. double leg. Yeah, oh, technically oh, speaking, you're not, you're not allowed to commit both hands to the uh, to the legs for a takedown. So Gidagas' nickname is F-16, right? Uh, yes. So, but he was flying now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gadakos has uh, changed tact here, and it appears to be paying dividends for him. Yeah, he's going back at it. Now, watch the head kick. Oh, that will be something, man, if he does that. Watch this. If you notice, Kinji dropped both hands. Let's see if he takes it up to the head. I love that uh, Kenji is also using the front kicks after throwing roundhouse kicks. Very deceptive. Well, halfway point elapsed in this second round, and as the I fight as like a whole, but Hidakos took it back, man, with the kicks. Oh. He did. Yeah, I mean, this second, this second round is undoubtedly going the way oh. of Hidakos. Oh. Was that back of the headshot? What was that? Yeah, he thought it was a kick to the body, but it was... Oh! oh. oh he has that right hand! Staggered him. Well, they are throwing down here. Kenji Grion getting as good as he's giving. Wow. Big wait, takedown, wait, though. Wait, wait, wait. There, you see the perhaps the power differential in the upper body. Kenji struggling standing up there. Those low calves, Ready? both of them are hurt. Fight. Yes, the kick again. Gadakos is is uh, is kind of checking those well now. He's he taking is. a lot of pressure away from him. He is. Stop, stop. Side Break choke. Point. Standing side choke. <laughs> yeah, I think head and arms are legal in karate combat, unfortunately. 24 seconds left here. Ooh, again, Gadakos times his big pickup, and that's a good takedown for Grion. Kadakos is definitely is having a hard time getting up as well. You see the pain oh, yeah. every time he stands up. Oh, I think. I wonder if he oh. hurt his own foot oh. there. Yeah. Yeah. I may have busted his own right foot there, catching it on the shin. Oh, look at him. He's having a hard oh, time to get yeah. up there. And it's actually something that was discussed in the rules meeting is, you know, if, if the referee sees you struggling to get back up the pit wall, they will consider a medical intervention. Let's have a look back at some of the replays here. That was nice there to let it slide underneath. Hard kicks there oh. from Kidakos. You and then he landed that cross too, right? Yeah. You got to wonder if that instep just, you know, took too much of a hammering right at the end of that round. This was a huge double leg pickup. Boom! Oh, the the right right hand. Hand. I mean, look, that second round, guys, I think we're, we're completely in agreement that Gadakos has evened this one up. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. It's definitely no. one and one, I, I believe. And, and that after receiving all that damage in round number one to go Water back stop. like that, that's oh, yeah. a fighter, Water dude. Stop. Oh, oh, they're going to oh, it's a corner stoppage. Oh. And I think we've just got injury to Nikos Gadakos. Both legs taking too much damage. Some from Grion and some of his own making. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, Gadakos is going to try and make his way back for the raising of the hands i think he might have a, a broken leg maybe a hairline fracture to that shin ladies and gentlemen our winner by stoppage out of the blue corner kenji Grio. Still, man, I'm telling you, uh, Kidakos, animal, to come back after that first round with the damage he sustained to his legs and then doing the same thing to Grillon, it's too bad that he got injured. At the I very mean, end. look, we, we've had some fantastic displays of heart at, at Karate Combat before. I mean, you want to go back to the main event last time out, Josh Quayhagen oh. uh, against Luis Rosa, but Nikos Kidakos uh, really getting stuck in there. Look at the fight stats from that bout. Total strikes very clearly going the way of the Frenchman. Uh, really, that telling the bulk of the story, but Gadakos, you know, those 14 kicks landed, they were significant. Oh, they yeah. Yep, full power, bending leg kicks. Got to say, I love the physicality of, of Kenji Grion at the, the start of that bout in particular. And, and every, he said what he was going to do, and he did it. You oh, know, yeah. the feints, the movement, the moving backwards and to the side, I mean, he was totally in control.
And the, the, the low kicks from both guys, I tell you, I'm, I feel like I should be sitting down right now. <laughs> <laughs> My legs are hurting after watching that fight. Sympathy, sympathy like <laughs> Uh Guys, we're going to move swiftly on heavyweights up next. Whoa, Plus, I know you love a good heavyweight fight. Uh, yep. Uh, we, of course, have got uh, Cahill Calloway taking on Elvin Agaev. And uh, Cahill Calloway, you know, he's, uh, he's undefeated in kickboxing and MMA and his, his pro record outside of karate combat. But he's got so much experience everywhere. You know what he does? Okay, I'm oh, sorry, he does boxing, Kyokushin, Taekwondo, Jeet Kune Do, Taekwondo, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He won time for the one night in four different weight classes in karate in Florida what? and won all fights. Stop. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, his, his opponent, though, Stephen, uh, Elvin Agaev, no relation to the great Rafael Agaev, <laughs> but he is also Azerbaijani. They have trained together yes. uh, uh, as well. Uh, so a, a lot of pedigree in his training camp. Yeah, 100%. I mean, the guy trains with some of the best. I mean, like you said, he trains with Rafael Agaev. He trains with Adamov. The guy is good everywhere. He's got good ground and pound. He's looking for that first round KO. I feel like everybody's looking for that first round KO. <laughs> yeah. Let's get it over with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is a really fun uh, debut fight for these guys. Heavyweights up now. Uh, Callaway and Agaev, let's go to the head-to-head. -head. Thank you, sir. Each defense of Karate Combat Tayyip, but it's the idea that every one of them is a good lawson. This fight is the fight of my life that defines who I am as a person. Yeah, you see, El Zerbar is done by Sokro Kmaul. I want him to be on edge the whole time and not know what I'm going to be doing. Inshallah, And if I have control over myself, then I will win the fight. Man. Heavyweight show knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome out of the blue corner, Kai the Cobra. Two karate combat for the first time. Cahill the Cobra, Callaway, fighting out of Orlando, Florida. The, he's got the earrings in. He's got his gauges in. Or are they, no, they're taped over. They're taped oh, over. okay. Yeah? Okay, I, <laughs> I know you it. had a confused look on your face there for a second. But <laughs> I was like, uh, what? Cahill Callaway, let me tell you, this guy is big, a true heavyweight. He is six foot four. In this 205 pound division. The guy's ready, he's already in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to fight. And now, now the referee, Mark Gordon, sets him back up. Let's jump up. Oh, I thought. Yeah, he just stepped up with one foot. <laughs> I, I, I saw him uh, yesterday, I saw him jumping on top. Elvin Agayev makes his way to the pit here in the red corner. Slightly younger than his opponent, 26 years old, a little bit shorter at six foot one, fighting out of Baku, Azerbaijan. Thinks he's going to have speed and agility to his advantage. Oh no, there we go. Good, good call yeah. on the, good call on the ears, boss. Yeah. <laughs> Tail of the tape for Cahill Calloway. There you see six foot four tall. Uh, unsurprisingly, or surprisingly though, the leg and arm reach is actually almost uh, completely even. I wonder if you're going to hear <laughs> with the cobra. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So there we have it, Elvin, a guy of 26 years old, Shotokan practitioner, coming in uh, a little bit light, uh, like his opponent, under 200 pounds, actually. So big frames on these guys. Fighters, it is time to enter the pit. Callaway fighting uh, very locally, representing American top team Longwood. Said this is essentially a, a home bout for him. Looking to draw on that Kempo Woo! background. The crowd is into this one right here. Mark Goddard, your referee. Scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen to sign up for the Karate Combat Dow airdrop. Be among the first 10,000 KC36 viewers to sign up for your chance to get additional Karate bonus tokens after the initial oh, launch. Stop. There is no purchase required. Stop. Stop. Stop. Stop. Come here. Oh, and I'm Mark friend, Goddard's. Uh, my friend, away from your corner, away from your corner. Mike Goddard's going to send Callaway to a neutral corner. and clear. Do not hold him I hit. love Goddard, right? One more <laughs> what a control. Take a point. Do not clinch him hit. Okay. He understands me? 
You understand? Uh, clean. Well, he's saying again, no dirty boxing. You can't pull down with a collar tie and throw the uh, throw the short inside shots. Look at the range that Callaway oh, covers. Oh, was that a low blow or Keep something? Going. Keep going. Well, He's Mark caught. Goddard says there was no low blow. Callaway pushes forward, nice little short jab there. Working his way on the inside. Oh, good oh, front kick. Nice, nice. nice. Mixing it up right away uh -oh. with the roundhouse. Oh, nice little sweep to uh, buy himself some time from Callaway. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Now, both these guys are going to... Listen to me. Push the uh, referee's Fight. temper here. <laughs> oh, nice cut kick on the inside. Oh, oh the nice right hand. By a guy. Oh, oh, nice cross back there. Yeah, Callaway lands cleanly. You've got to love the work rate from these two. Can they keep it up for the three threes, though? Oh, rock and sock and robots, let's go. Yeah, look at it. You want to talk aggression from Callaway? He's just marching forward. I think one kick has been thrown this first round. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't do that. You understand me? Don't do that. Keep it calm. Fight. Oh, beautiful. Spinning kick back kick to the body. Oh, good shots again. Just walk straight onto those punches. I think defense is going out the window here. <laughs> it's a fight. It's a brawl right now. Well, let me tell you, blocking with your face oh. makes it for an exciting fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for us. Oh, they're just going back and forth. Yeah, a guy have firing back. These guys do know we have two more rounds, right? <laughs> uh, I don't think they care right now. Uh, the crowd, unsurprisingly, getting stuck into this one. Listen, time, hold time. Listen to me. You come here too. Come here too. Keep it clean, you understand me? Just relax, concentrate on the fight. Ready? Fight. 30 seconds left here. Oh. oh. Searching straight shots. Oh, again he lands. Oh! Agaya getting beaten back here a couple of times. Stop, stop, stop! Uh, overhook and uh, framing there. Spinning back kick coming. Saw him set that up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, head kick nice. by Agaya. Woo! Cahill Calloway good for coming good. forward. Nice front kick there. What a round! Can <laughs> wow. I keep it up? Woo. I have no idea, but we're going to find out. I love that K.O. Calloway doesn't want to go near the stool. He just, <laughs> wants to, he just wants to sit on the edge of the pit the whole time. Very right. close fight. You yeah, know, I, mean, I mean, which way are you going to go in that first round? We're going to see some replays in a minute, but there's just so much action. I think it's pretty even when it comes to the boxing, yeah. but I do think Cal um, my man Agaev has thrown more kicks in that fight. Like you said, the, the kicks count more than the strike. That's the it. Punches. Yep. So, he could have taken the round. So here are some of the replays. That was good work from Agaev, actually. That was, that was a spinning kick, that kick. landed. He had that a couple of times. Three inches higher to the solar plexus, that could have been it. But Callaway landed some beautiful straight shots for a lot of that round coming forward. Good front kick there by Callaway. Right at the end of the round. <laughs> Woo! Well, you hear the clutch, the crowd shouting Cobra. Uh, unsurprisingly, a partisan crowd here for the American, and not just the American, the local Floridian as well. Three minutes on the clock here, second round underway. Black pants for Agaev, white pants for Callaway. Ooh, nice cross counter there by Agaev. Callaway coming out, kicking this round. I think he got some good advice from his cornerman. He got to throw more kicks. Oh! Setting something up at those low kicks. Uh, 
That's good work from the Azerbaijani. Short little shots on the inside. One of the things that made Callaway so dangerous in that first round was continuing to press forward. He's not doing that quite as much right now. Cross counter again. Hey, guy. Well, this is a bit better from Callaway coming forward again now, trying to put that aggressiveness that scores so highly in karate combat to use. Callaway tenderizing the, that front leg a little bit of a guy in for the side kick. Oh, we did wonder if they'd be able to keep up such a furious pace, but that's Ooh. good work from a guy in. Good going up top. He's backed Callaway up against the uh, corner of the pit here. Oof! Great kick to the calf. We've seen these pit walls used uh, very decisively in previous bouts, not so much so yet tonight. Ooh. Oh, nice little oh, cut back. Yeah. Timed it well. Guys. Rock and Sock and Robot to the middle, and that's a blitz from a guy oh. all the way back. Look at the distance he covered. Right at the end of the round, that could very much be the deciding factor in this second round here. Oh, and again connecting. Yeah, where well, you see the motivation there. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. He's taken over. Callaway lost this round. I'm sure a guy was wishing he had another 30 seconds on the clock. Man, as soon as you see your opponent hurt, you got to go for it, and he did. Replays coming from this second round. Slower start, but they ended with a bang. Wow, the blitz was nice because he stayed that distance and he, he connected at the end of his punches, and that's normally hard to do with the blitz because you crowd yourself, but he didn't. See, Callaway tried to lean back there for that goes. as well. Here we go. Yeah, punch is falling a little bit short, but those all landed. When you're leaning back like that, it's hard to put yourself back in good position, especially yeah. when your opponent keeps coming forward. That's it. You want to move just to the always side. off balance. Right. Move to the side. That's what you do then. You got to ole him. Ole! <laughs> well, here we go. Crowd trying to get behind Callaway one more time. Seconds out. They're down into the pit. Third. And final three minutes on the clock. Still five more bouts coming your way tonight once these heavyweights are done. from Nagayev. Now Faint still coming in. Ooh, good counter jab by Callaway. Ooh. Oh, there's the blitz. And the blitz. Stop, stop, stop. What's the back of that head? Right. Well, you've got to strike the target as it's presented to you. Just under two minutes left here. Let's see if Agaev looks to close that distance again. Oh, oh nice right right right right. Callaway. Callaway covers up well, but they're getting stuck in against the wall again. Let's work. Let's work. Stop, stop, stop, stop, separate. The crowd willing the American forward here. 
But man, Agayev is doing great to the strike. He's keeping him away, constant throwing the jab on as well. Do you feel like it just took him that first round to settle into a rhythm? Yep. Now approaching the final minute. And that's cross. Touch it with that right hand. Oh! I feel that Agayev's got a little more pop. Oh! Last minute. Yeah, Callaway has, uh, has stopped the forward aggression that was so powerful for him early on. A bit more of it here, perhaps, but only 40 seconds left to go. In the third round. Wow. The counter right hand. It worked. It worked. Wow. Well, I'm going to need to see a replay of that because that was uh, extremely fast when it happened. I thought Callaway had him hurt, but he came back with his own right hand and dropped Callaway. I mean, wow. we saw several times in that battle, they were just both getting stuck in, and anyone landing was going to do some damage. Let's take a look back at the finish here. Boom. Ooh. There's the cross. It was the boom, right, boom. and then look, 3-4. Yeah, ooh. That was the first blitz, and they all connected. Yeah, well, that was earlier on in, in the blitz. Oh. Just some of that screw shot on the inside. Going to the top of the head, but still landing. Let's see if we can get the finish queued up here. Uh, we're probably going to go with the back kick. That yeah. was a beautiful and, and back that kick. that landed very nicely. Ooh, nice cross. He oh, ate the right and that came straight it. back. Yeah, that was it. And another oh, one yeah, when he went down. One. Good accuracy. Oof. Wow. How tough is Elvin Agaya? Look at that on the way down. Oh. And there you go, looking away. As soon as your eyes are not engaging the opponent, the referee is going to have no choice but to protect the down fighter. And he does so, your win is going to go to Elvin Agaev. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a fight by these two gladiators. <laughs> Our winner by TKO out of the red corner, Elvin Agaev. <laughs> Elvin Agaev, your winner by TKO. What a great debut for him tonight. Ruins the night of uh, the local fighter, Calvin Cahill. And Elvin Agaev's going to head up pit side, where he's going to get a word with our broadcast colleague, Alex Wendling. What's he talking about? And I am with our winner, Elvin Agaev. This is your debut tonight. How special is it that you got the finish in there? Bugün senin günündür. Bu uğur sana ne mana bildirir? Elhamdülillah, çok şükür şu buradayım. Söz verdik. Vakt var dirdi ki gele. İstediğimiz döşü gösteri. O da da bugündü. Hemen döşü de gösterdik. Her şey göre kambat kartı kalitesinde çok sağ bildiğim. Alhamdulillah, we are glad we are here. Uh, we promised and we delivered. I'm really glad to be uh, in Karate Combat today here, winning the uh, the fight. Well, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, Alvin Agayev. Well, let's take a look back at some of the stats from that bout because there were an awful lot of punches thrown there. Look at that. Oof. Elvin Agayev strikes landed 71 to 43, taking it in the punches and the kicks as well. Uh, guys, give us your thoughts. Give us your thoughts on uh, that heavyweight bout. It was a fast and furious start, slowed a little in the middle, and then boom, fireworks at the end. Yeah, the first round I thought was just amazing. I mean, both guys trading punches, zero kicks pretty much landed. I think a guy had like two or three kicks in that first round. But I mean, both guys, both tough, 
tough opponents and can take some hits, let me tell you. Yeah, Bass, what do you think about, uh, you know, what happened to Cahill there? He had a lot of aggression earlier on, and then he started to come back into it, but the counter-striking of a guy have. Yeah, but I also thought that in the first round, he went so completely crazy. Maybe they took a lot of steam out of him. And maybe then the scorer said, okay, you got to tone back a little bit, and that just by itself, I think that was wrong to do. I think when he attacked, put your opponent on pressure, you have more chance of winning. The downside is you're going to need a lot of stamina. Yeah, I hope we can find some good fights for both these guys in this division, though, because I'd very much like to see uh, Callaway come back again with, with that sort of aggression. Oh, that would be great. Yes, of course. I mean, we had a nice, great uh, division here. I saw him walking around Black Magic here. Oh. That would be a nice <laughs> fight between the both of them. Yes. Yeah, certainly would be some big boys in that division. Uh, we're going to be back very, very shortly. Why don't you go ahead and take a look at this quick video? Oh, Okay, so all the karate combat fighters that you're going to see tonight have a background in karate. What you might not know is that all these guys have different styles. Gojo Ryu, Shito Ryu, Kyokushin, Kampo Karate, Shotokan Karate. Today, we are going to focus on Shotokan and on Kyokushin. Shotokan. All long stances, wide stances, all the kicks are above the waist and their blocks and counters are not circular movements like you see a lot. It's very more precise. If he gives me a right straight, boom, boom, and there's the counter right away. Kyokushin focus on powerful blows in order to inflict as much damage as possible. They are allowed to kick the legs, no punch to the face, and they are specialists in close range combat. Yes, I always call it fighting in the phone booth because this, what you see in a, in a, a Kyokushin match, that's it. They will never see a moment if he gives me a kick that I'm moving out of the way. They like to take it and immediately counter. Big difference in styles. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what style of karate do you practice because a punch is a punch, a kick is a kick. So, may the best man win. Us. Um. Right, so coming up next, uh, bout number six this evening in the lightweight division, Tommy Azuz taking on Mitchell Thorpe, France versus the UK. Uh, Bass, Mitchell Thorpe, really exciting young man. Both these guys have got the same record, one win, one loss. They're both extremely fast and dynamic, uh, but Mitchell Thorpe, we, we like seeing him move about in the pit, don't we? Yeah, Mitchell Thorpe, he says that he loves his opponent because he's very fast and he fights from far, so he's going to use a lot of footwork in order to avoid that. He believes that during the fight, he will open up his opponent and then he's going to catch him. Putting pressure on him, also a very important part of his game plan. Yeah, and uh, Stephen, Tommy Azuz, a massive Jean-Claude Van Damme fan, if you couldn't guess by <laughs> his nickname, Noxu Kao. Uh, he's also one and one here, uh, taking this fight on three weeks' notice, a little bit less time to prepare. Yeah, man, sometimes, you know, obviously he's a martial artist and he's always ready to fight, you know, but uh, he feels like his opponent's weapons are definitely his two to the body, his low kicks, but he will be able to counter his opponent. He's going to be all over the place, but guess what? He's going to look for that KO with the kick. Oh, We're looking for we kick KOs, that. baby. <laughs> I'm certainly down for that. Your last preliminary fight this evening. It is Tommy Azuz taking on Mitchell Thorpe. My name is Tommy Azuz. This fight is important for me because I want to be the best. My name is Mitchell Thorpe. I took a loss in my last fight, so I'm looking forward to testing myself. I have nothing to lose, everything to gain. I'll definitely be trying to push on the fight. Win this fight, get more money. I've got that confidence behind me, and I'm definitely feeling like it will be a stoppage. It will look like Halloween party, blood. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome tonight. Fighting out of the blue corner, Mitchell the Ghost Thorpe. Making his way to us from the United Kingdom. Actually training out of uh, BKK fighters down on Clacton and on sea. A lot of guys in the uh, UFC and a lot of mixed martial arts starts coming out of that, including Arnold Allen as his oh. original camp. 
right on the East Coast. A very accomplished young man, was actually former rank number one in the world in under 21s in the under 75 kilo category. Uh, so many regional titles to name. Very, very fast, very dynamic. But he is looking to rebound back and from that unanimous decision opponent. loss against Lazar Kukulicic. Tommy Natsukao Azu! Tommy Azu's a man we've seen several times before. Both these guys, it's no mistake when we say that they're prospects for karate combat. They're both 23 years old. All very, very even on paper, apart from Mitchell Thorpe's got a little bit longer reach in the legs, as you'll see in a moment. Three times French champion. Took a silver in the European Championships as well. And as Vass mentioned earlier, he thinks he's going to get uh, the knockout with a kick. Turn the tape for Mitchell Thorpe, 23 years old. Wado Ryu is his style. And a little bit longer in the legs there, standing 5 foot 9, 40.5 inches. It's going to be a three and a half inch leg advantage for him. Tommy Azuz, again, very, very similar indeed, just that little bit shorter. Noksu Kao is his nickname. He's going to be fighting orthodox. We're used to seeing a lot of switch stances from Mitchell Thorpe. Ready? Bow. You ready, sir? You ready, sir? Wayne Spinola Fight. is your referee. And Karate Combat 36 is powered by Hedera. Man, Whoa. both oh. young guys too, both fiery, man. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Yeah, my I mean, dad always says, to be 23 and know what I know now. Oh. I mean, you know, <laughs> they are both really eager to, yeah. to put on a show. And look at the speed and the, the distance covered with those kicks from Azuz. Oh, they've got to be a little careful not to overcommit too much, but uh, getting stuck in indeed. Both guys are on their toes, they're fast. Let's see who's going to close that gap first. Ooh. Good left hand. Yeah, Tommy Azuz, uh, he last uh, May of this year dropped uh, a TKO loss to Artur Gazanov. Did pick up that split decision win over Gabriel Brito July of last year. Oh, and that's a big oh, knee, but you cannot yeah, plumb clinch and knee. It's got to be a strike rather than a, a, a, a clinch maneuver. Azuz lands significantly there. Stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop. Look at me. Fight. Whoa. He's got to keep the pressure now. He's got to keep the pressure. You know he's got him hurt. Uh, got Azuz has got to keep moving, but you got to do it cautiously. Seen so many guys get hurt. Yep. And their opponent goes after him, and they end up getting knocked out. Yep. Now, these are both young guys who have a lot of sport karate experience, but really transition very seamlessly to that full contact uh, environment. Good spin back kick by Mitchell. That was nice. Oh! Man, they are sitting down on that left hand. Yeah, Mitchell's got to be a dangerous kick a to little do. bit about defense as he comes in. Minute left on the clock here. Again, Thorpe's got to watch that uh, control as he goes to throw the knee. You can frame off, but you can't uh, clinch and pull your opponent onto the strike. Oh, oh another nice right hand. hand. And Thorpe's trying to slow Azuz down here. Does a good job. Shot. Yeah. Fight. That's the second time that Thorpe has been sat down by Tommy Azuz. Another left oh. hand. He's landing those twos left and right. Yeah, switch and landed that left hand. Azusa's timing is just on point. Very good. Kind of speed we expect from the guys in the 150 pound division. Wow, great counters. Oh, oh that's a knee. It yeah, like, right? Thorpe, that's a couple of times he's tried to throw that knee as Azus closes. Look at Azus. <laughs> he wants to go. Um, back up to the pit sides they go. See if we've got some replays for you. 
from this first round. Talk us through it, Bass and uh, Wonderboy. Boom! There's the cross counter on the right kick. That's why I always say set them up and punch yes. us. Yes. Oh, and there again, look again. at this. Can throw the two backing up too with power. He dropped them backing up. That, that's good. That's our power, you know. But you oh, can't yeah. push over the back foot. That means he's got just a great oh, solid punch. The, beautiful. Cancel the kick and chase him back across the pit. Great counter there also by Mitchell. Mitchell Thorpe. Oh, tough fight. Man, great first round. Azuz didn't even take a breath, it looked like. <laughs> okay, here we go, gentlemen. Ready? He's like, ah, we don't get tired. We don't get tired. We don't need any air. Well, another three minutes on the clock. There oh, it is again. Oh. again. The timing. Yeah, and Thorpe wants to get stuck oh. in here. He ain't right. They're throwing everything they've got. Stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop. Well, no time wasted. Yeah, no grabbing in the knee. That's what he did. Yeah, this is going to be a final warning for Mitchell Thorpe. Here we go. Ready? Ready? Fight. Oh, beautiful. Good. Oh, again that rear kick coming up the inside. Man, these guys are fast. Watch your heads, gentlemen. Oof. Another body there. Another body kick by Mitchell. He's finding success with that right leg to the body. Oh, Ooh, inside. Nice inside. And very well timed just yes. below the knee because otherwise it's... Dangerous, you know, Shin. Halfway point in the bout here. I have a feeling these guys are going to be good to go at this pace for the full nine. Oh, That's another a body lovely kick. body kick. Oh! Stop. Get up, get up, up, up, up, up. Here we go. Fight. Watch Azuz throw that two again. Oh, the shin under. <laughs> Full of the shin with the foot. Ay, ay, ay. I, I feel never that. really Bus, understood Bus that. Is Why don't shin the shin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They don't care. Oh. Very hard to game plan yes. for guys like this. Yes. Stop, too Ricky. fast. <laughs> I mean, yeah, both these guys uh, really showing what 23 years old can do in the speed oh, yeah. department. Great conditioning out of both. Oh, oh what a timing. lovely timing on that rear leg kick. Just took the base out from under Tommy Azuz. And this is good ground and pound as well. 25 seconds left. Thorpe tries the wheel kick at the end. Swing and a miss. Wow, well, they've got uh, about a minute to try and find their feet here. I think Mitchell, that, I think that, that, that second round goes to my man Mitchell. He Thorpe, definitely yep. pushed the pace this round. One and one. Yeah, let's see uh, who got the better of that one. Replays coming in now. Boom. Yeah, the timing on Azus is really oh, yes. nice. But then Thorpe had some really great counters as well. Ooh. Well, that left landed uh, very cleanly indeed. But I think the low kicks from Mitchell definitely kept uh, Azus away a little bit, kept from blitzing it. Because every time we blitz him, we throw that leg kick and I'll yep. balance him. Yep. Hey, gentlemen, here we go. Ready? Fight. Well, again, Mitchell Azuz. didn't want to shake hands. <laughs> he just wanted to get right to it. Oh, oh again, yeah. he times yeah. that kick as he blitzes in. Yep, Stephen was just talking about it. 
It's crazy what just a level change will do, right? Yep. Go into the body, you get punched in the face, you go to the leg, off balances him. Now he's got to reset. Now Azusa's got to reset and think about it now. Oh, oh that was just what to do it to him. Oh, nice. Kick. Oh, big body lock. Beautiful. Yes. That's a huge round. <laughs> well, moves to mount. Unfortunately, that's not allowed here. I'm really impressed with Mitchell's ability to adapt after that first round. Uh, unbelievable. Really good. Oh, again, again, he does it. it he is. does it all the time. Wow. I mean, that's fight IQ, right? The ability oh, to adapt yeah. on the go. Yep. And his distance, everything is good. Watch fingers. Watch those fingers. Very impressive from the 23-year-old. Oh! Change up there with the with the roundhouse. Oh, oh another body yes. kick. Oh, I love the timing on that right hand off the, <laughs> the rear leg kick as well. Azuz with some work to do with uh, a minute 30 left in his third and final round. Oh. Oh. Thorpe with uh, the rhythm and the momentum here. And, and, and throwing every Quickly. kick. I mean, watch back kicks, front kicks, front kicks. I mean, he's throwing it all. Fight. There we go, front kick again. There it is again. Nice. Every time. Wow, beautiful. It's a clinic on the uh, timing here. And this is good pound to pound. Whoa, and again, it ties his belt <laughs> straight back at it. <laughs> Well, Mitchell thought oh, hitting the zone. Again, he did eat a, a good shot from Azuz, but Stop. disrespect the legs up, to the up, side. Up, up, up, up. Wow, the uh, the stats on this one are going to be fun. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what Azuz has to do to stop that that low kick. He's so smart! Oh, oh, look at this! Right over the top. But you know, the that moment that he back chooses back the front kick, I mean, it's really nice. Oh yeah. So Mitchell Thorpe pressing forward again here. 20 seconds left, looking for one final outburst of energy. Ten seconds. Oh yeah, the corner oh. shot for a switch kick. Oh. Azuz lands. Connected to be the big shot. Fight out. You hear the play? Fight out. Well, could just be a little bit too little, too late there. But what a fight from Tommy Azuz and Mitchell Thorpe. Non-stop the entire time. There was literally no downtime. That's I mean, fun I, with that great pass. I guess in theory we could get a fourth <laughs> round, but uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. I think Mitchell Thorpe probably has taken this one. Yep. Two to one on the scorecards, perhaps. But we'll see. You, you see them breathe. He almost doesn't breathe, fight. right? I mean, it, it's amazing. <laughs> and Mitchell Thorpe is breathing heavy, but he's just coming forward the whole time. The whole also. Time. But my man Mitchell adapting after that first round, going not to the body because he kept getting caught with the right hand, yep. going low, uh, balancing component. There was a lot of times he took him down, which was enabling him to throw that yep. ground to pound right here. There. Yeah. Boom. I, mean, I just need to see a highlight package of just the five or six of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Because that was the game. That was wow. the whole fight. Fantastic. Took him out of it. Beautiful. What? Well, we've got a decision. We're going to go down here, see who's getting their hand raised. Both these guys currently with the same record in karate combat. Okay, right here, sir. sir. One and one for decision. both of these gentlemen. Somebody's going to go two and one, and somebody's going to fall to great one fight, and guys. two. Awesome job, both of you. Fantastic. That's where every fight should be. That was great. Referee right, was impressed. Combat fans, another phenomenal bout by two outstanding gladiators. Our winner coming out of the blue corner, Mitchell. Mitchell Thorpe takes it as we suspected he might of your winner by majority decision, meaning that one judge gave it a draw and two fighters gave it to Mitchell Thorpe. You know, and I, what I'm impressed of yesterday at the way in he misstepped here on something and he, he hurt his ankle. Possibly oh, twisted his ankle. Saw him with a big bag of ice, but. Let's take a look at the stats here, and that really does tell the story, even on the punches. But look at that on the kicks, 28 to 2. Totally outstriking him, almost double, 66 to 36. Mitchell Thorpe is your winner there. 
Let's go to our broadcast, our broadcast colleague, Robin Black, for some pit side analysis. Thanks, guys. I might be dressed as Mr. J, but I am not joking when I tell you that is one of the fastest fights that you're ever going to see in your life. And it's not just hand speed or foot speed, it's something called game speed. These things are happening in multiple tenths of a second. You have to read what is coming and make an adaptation. So it's programmed into your body how to respond and then you watch yourself do it. Those two young karatekas just put on a wonderful contest. Joker. Yes, thank you, Robin Black. Uh, Bass, Wonderboy, final thoughts on the last of our preliminary bouts there. <laughs> Speed, that was like we were watching a time lapse of the fight. <laughs> right. It was crazy, right? It was wild, man. Back and forth, man. Both of these guys really were toughing it out in great shape. But my man, Mitchell, man, pulled it off. We've had some fantastic prelim bouts uh, so far tonight. But guess what? we got four more main card oh, bouts coming up. Oh, yes, and these are big ones. They certainly are. Of course, that main event coming up later, Edgar Screevers taking on uh, Bruno Souza. Of course, Igor de Castaneda is taking on uh, Frank Lamina. We've got the debut of James Vick. So much to look forward to. Join us again here, pit side at Karate Combat 36, in just a few moments. I am Bruno the Tiger Souza, I'm from Brazil, and that's where my story starts. In my hometown, I started judo, but when I moved to, to Belém, and I used to watch karate, and I asked to join karate. At some point, I was training judo and karate, but I was losing too much in judo and winning in karate, so I was like, you know what, I think judo is not for me, I'm gonna stick to karate. The Machida family got me involved with karate, they are such a good example as human beings. Lucky to have them not only as senseis, but also as friends. He grew up with me and my brothers who are teaching him. When he turned seven years old, to start preparing him for the local karate tournament. As I had Sensei Shinzo as my sensei, Sensei Lyoto was the one that we were watching, we were following his role. I was looking at him being an undefeated world champion, and I thought like, oh, if he can do it, I can do it. Bruno Souza is a student of Lyoto Machida. He's coming from the Machida Karate School and he's been an LFA champion. I got involved with karate combat since the very first show. Lyoto watched it live and right after he called me, he's like, there is something really nice going on. They talk about karate combat, I watch it after and I was like, I was sure that one day I would be fighting for karate combat. My wife always said that she want to see me on those knees and with that belt fighting in the pit. And Maria Paula has been with me for five years now. She knows everything about the game. She understands so good. She can be even my body. Like sometimes I need to train. She just gear up and we train. You have someone that understands you so good. It makes the fighter's life so much easier. When you train too long MMA, you kind of go away from the roots. Fighting for the most important karate organization is bringing my real animal, my real spirit back. The tiger has been with me the whole life. I am not chasing for anything. I'm ambushing my opponent just like the tiger does. We are training hard to adapt ourselves to that pit and to use those walls. Once he's get adapted for the karate combat rules, he has a lot of potential to become a karate combat champion. I'm coming for not only gold, I'm coming for everything. I'm coming to take over. This is an extremely worthy debutant himself, though. Bruno, the Tiger Souza, originally from Belém. He is a protege of Machida Karate. He's got longer, longer leg, Ooh. but shorter arms. Lovely speed on those punches from Souza, getting on the inside, landing a couple of short strikes. He's got the much lower guard here. Oh, oh the below does. Ay, ay, ay, ay, ay. Low blow. Well, and, like I said, great at distance, a nice one there. Whoop, boom, beautiful. Yeah, that, this is one thing we perhaps expected with the MMA background. 
of Souza, the clinches are probably going to be far more in his wheelhouse. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, Souza's all over the place. Everything. Oh. They're flying into the head. The Ooh, first one from Zagini. Souza. Look at that lovely <laughs> kick to the uh, the leg as well. In the zone now is Souza. Good catch of the kick and. He's going to get oh, five oh, seconds oh. of ground and pound here, and this is good posture and good ground and pound. Who's crosses? He's breaking out the video game moves now. <laughs> yeah. One cliche that we hear very often in combat sport is now keep your hands up. It's true during an exchange, oh. but not when you're outside of your opponent range. You, you have a better mobility with your hands down. Oh, oh. again, he? he is. Well, is he I willing think, to try? I think oh. that was it. Oh, Just oh, that oh, uh, crane oh. kick. Oh, and oh. Souza gets stuck in as well. A lovely oh. flurry to finish it. A nice show of respect. I love to compete, I love to put myself out in the lights and just to test myself. Every time the greats show up and be great is a reflection on their preparation. I'm training since 1998 and it's all about consistency. It's all about putting in the hard work. It's not just about muscles, it's about fear. He believes he is the mentally strongest fighter on the entire roster. When I came into the karate combat, they already, in my first fight, gave me the best guy on the roster. He is one of the best karate combat fighters right now. I became a champion by knocking out Rocha. Squibbers is right back. Squibbers has yeah. won it. The champ won. My mindset was to attack and every time after the fight, says, ah, that was like 30 or 40%. To all the people who don't like me saying that I'm fighting on 20%, just step into the pit and make me fight 100%. Oh! The lightweight division here, Bas, should be very, very afraid. I'm the greatest fighter ever. It feels right that I'm a champion. Who are you? Luis wanted to go again against Scrivers. I am the official challenger to the belt. We had to make this fight happen. Edgar Scrivers and Luis Rocha are going to vie for that lightweight title belt. Uh, this champion might be unstoppable. It's fight business. Anything can happen. Scrivers is dizzy on his feet. Oh, and the champion has been knocked down. Maybe he will have underestimated his man. The first champion in karate combat to be dethroned. In the last fight, I wasn't mentally focused. Overestimated himself. It is what it is. I don't like to lose. Nobody likes to lose, you know? The champion now will learn the wise lesson. Do not stand still. Maybe bet down one time. The only failure is being afraid to take risks, to go out there. I'm gonna come back even stronger. intensity maximum striking high on the single leg nicely done and here's the ground and pound silva felt he would be more aggressive nice. also felt he would be Two, more tactical but again three, largely playing defense four again you saw the sweat coming off the head big left hand down goes taking silva off of the three, left watch the back of the head four. Oh, screevers is using the wall the whole time a performance for edgar screevers yeah look at this screevers yeah. good practice Nice. Oh. Got five seconds to work. It's down next to Scrivers one and oh. Yeah, both I of think them. Right there. Hit. Nice got taste. Oh, again, Scrivers oh. two nice punches. Yeah. Roach are trying to grab that arm and square off. They're gonna stop. You need to stop him in order for him to stop. Oh, oh. oh Scrivers is right back. Scrivers is right back. Scrivers has yep. won it. And he just went out there and took it. There was no doubt. He 
needs pressure to perform. Wow. And boy, is he getting some, and that's a great flurry. Oh! oh. Was an elbow it looked like, right? Well, left oh, in. it was cleanly with the back of the hand. Very nice. Oh, man. Five oh! Two. Look at that. Something. Whoa! And gets Grievers! Oh, lovely oh. switch to the trip. That Completely nice. disguised the entry. That was really nice. And look how cool he stays. Oh, oh, again beautiful. with the trip. Man. Beautiful entry. What a, what a timing. And I think this was the most significant shot. Yeah, lets him dip into it. And the Superman punch, very Buff. unexpected, but very clean. Oh, that was a nice kick. Very good control. Also, he didn't keep spinning, which is a hard thing to do with that kick. It's very hard to control the way he does it. Screevers lets him. Yeah. It's almost like he's not running him down, which is not a smart thing to do. Look at that walking forward. It's a southpaw. Oh! oh. Screevers gets dropped! Big ground and pound from Hosha. And Hosha is coming forward again to his credit. Big left hand. He clubs him again. Oh, he's dizzy. Screevers is dizzy on his feet. Oh, and That's a jump it. in. He's been knocked down. Whoa! Wow! There's a lot to look forward to <laughs> coming up later. Uh, hello and welcome back to Karate Combat 36, the Halloween edition. Uh, myself, Josh Palmer, Bass Rutten, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, alongside Alex Wendling and Robin Black here, bringing you all the action from Pitside tonight. Guys, we've just had six fantastic prelim bouts. Uh, what a fight to end, though. Mitchell Thorpe and uh, Tommy Azuz has got to touch on that one more time. It, it, it was just crazy. The speed on it, both back and forth. And Mitchell Thorpe in the first round, he didn't take that first round. And for him, the way he came back, that was insane. The way he adapted after that first round, got the W, uh, adding those low kicks to off-balance his opponent, and got that win was just amazing. Yeah, and of course, we had those heavyweights as well. Elvin Agaev and uh, uh, Cahill Calloway, they just went with power the whole way through. <laughs> man, Calloway, he just came out like a freaking <laughs> crazy man. And, and, and I think that maybe the first round, he went too hard, maybe. That's why he had to pull back. He had the audience here as well, you know, so you get really fired up. Oh, yeah. And it took maybe a little bit of steam out, and then his opponent, like I have, man, I mean, he started taking control, and he just got him at the end. Stopped yeah, him. I, I think we've got to touch on as well uh, the toughness of Nikos Kadakos oh. with those, oh. those low kicks. That was a, a real fun one. And then coming back, the way he did uh, after that low kick. I mean, both guys were taking some shots at that low calf. But uh, like I said, watching those fights make my legs hurt. <laughs> yeah. So lots to look forward to on uh, Karate Combat. Now, in case you missed our huge momentous announcement that happened uh, over the past month, Karate Combat is launching a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. And that gives you guys at home, as fans of the league, the chance to control what happens and the outcomes. All you've got to do is go to karate.com forward slash airdrop, sign up, and when we release our DAO, you'll get an assignment of Karate Combat tokens, and that will allow you to influence the league. And you get to say what happens with the fighters. You get to say who you think is going to win. If they win, you get more tokens. If they lose, nothing happens, and you get to try again. I uh, appreciate that's a lot to take in. So in case <laughs> you guys don't understand it. Nope. Nope. And in case I don't understand it, here's a video for you guys at home uh, to tell you what's going on. <laughs> oh, OK, guys, OK, OK. There we go. Oh, you serious, dude? There. All right, everybody can have your attention. Listen up. Karate Combat is the new striking league taking over combat sports. Real fights, real stories, real knockouts. And boy, this upcoming December, Karate Combat is giving the whole league to its fans. Karate Combat is issuing a token that will govern the league. Yes, I know, of course, you've seen these tokens, but trust me, this is completely different. Because Karate Combat will have no owners, no hidden strings, nothing. Just the Karate Token. Oh, come on, man. Not you again. Go here. Push! Push! Ooh, get that head on. Stay down. People. But wait, there's more. Check out our new app. Pick a fighter, and if that fighter wins, you win more tokens. Meaning, more of the league goes to you. Well, what do you all think? All right. My work is done here. Go to karate.com slash airdrop for more information.
Really, Bas, a, a longhorn bull. A longhorn bull, <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. He, he was a sweetheart. They were telling me that he was, uh, all, they, they put him with kids, like three, four, four years old. He's a very nice little longhorn. Little longhorn? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, longhorn, yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, well, obviously, that gives you a bit more information, but wait, there is more. We've got a bonus offer for you here as part of Karate Combat 36. If you want to get additional Karate bonus tokens after the initial launch, scan the QR code on your screen or go to karate.com forward slash airdrop right now and be among the first 10,000 KC36 viewers to sign up. There is absolutely no purchase required. Uh, so, as we mentioned, six preliminary fights in the books. We've got four more big ones on the main card coming your way. Let's take a look at what's coming up this evening. So, your main event tonight, it is Bruno Souza taking on Edgar's the Bear Slayer Screevers in that main event. Your co-main event, we're going to drop down into the middleweight. What's going on? Uh-oh. Uh, guys, Something I'm getting a little bit weirded out here. Why is there a siren? Oh, jeez. Okay, we got it. They're coming. Okay, head kicks only, okay, Steven? Oh, okay, okay. I got I you. I saw you kicking on the back, head kicks only. I no can problem. do that. I can, yeah, I can okay. help. I, I'm, I can help. Head shots. Yeah, oh, you can get that like I've seen you kick back. <laughs> what you talking about? You think the crowd need to run for cover here? <laughs> Woo! This is not good. Save yourselves, people. <laughs> We're going to have to talk to security, get this mess cleaned up. It get him out of here. Just give me a samurai sword and I go to town. Let's try and get back to this main card again. Of course, co-main event tonight, middleweight division. Igor de Castaneda faces uh, Franklin the Bullet. Mina, both guys coming back from losses, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, James Vick, former MMA standout, makes his promotional debut. Uh, George Perez, though, very tough person there. We're going to open up tonight in the welterweight division. Spaniard Fernando Paz is taking on Venezuelan Diego Avendano. That is your first bout on this main card this evening. Uh, Bas, let's talk about Diego Avendano, because originally from Venezuela, went up to Canada. This is his first time fighting in the US with his family watching. What a story this guy has. Dude, he came to America with $220 in his pocket. And when somebody says $220, it's $220. <laughs> Otherwise, it's $250, $300. That's right. right. So $220, he didn't speak the language at all. Wow. And then he decides, to, because he was already training in kickboxing and a whole bunch of other sports, to go and start training with Joe Valtellini. Now, Ooh. Joe Valtellini, yeah, exactly. That guy is a freaking animal. And uh, he said the first training session, yeah, that was great. Joe told me, so he, he, he sweeped Joe Valtellini in the first uh, immediately. And then Joe said, OK, I'll do it three times to him. And then I stopped beating him up. <laughs> so he learned a lot at training with a guy like that. He's an amazing fighter. I, and especially with this, what you already mentioned, his family now coming over from Venezuela. He hasn't seen him for a long time. For them being here, I think it's going to give him some extra fire. Well, let's actually see if we can get a quick word with his sister. Alex Wendling is down pit side uh, with the relatives of Diego Avendale. Yes, I am pit side with Elizabeth Mann. It's a long time coming for Diego. This is going to be the first time you're able to watch him inside the pit and in the United States. So how special is it? It's honestly the best night of my life. It's really special. It's one of the greatest nights I've been to, and I'm really excited for him. I know he works really hard to be here today and he really is the best fighter ever. That's awesome. And it just got a little bit spooky in here, but can we predict some type of scary knockout, or how do you think he gets the win tonight? I'm pretty sure he's going to knock out the other fighter. <laughs> All right, well, you heard it here first. If she predicts it, we got to put some money on that. I know him. He worked really hard for it. I know. Back to you guys. She's got to learn to uh, get yeah. some tokens and start betting <laughs> them. Uh, it's it. actually not even betting. you gotta, you got to uh, you gotta love the confidence there. Of course, uh, he's stepping up against Fernando Paz. Two and one record here on Karate Combat. Uh, very, very good opponent for him. Yes, uh, Fernando says that his opponent you know, he's got pretty good kicks, but not good punches. So he's going to use his counter ability to get that W. OK, head to head coming your way very shortly for Diego Avendano and Fernando Paz. But first, we're going to give you a quick recap of the rules of the pit. Now I'm getting cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you.
Hola, soy Fernando Moreno Paz y soy de España, de un pueblo pequeño de, de Almagro. Para mí todas las luchas son importantes y creo que podría haber en juego que después de esta pelea, que está claro que ganaré, quiero aspirar a más alto y quiero quitarle ese título a Joshua Cojalla. My name is Diego Vendaño. I'm from Caracas, Venezuela, for a specific area, La Urbina, Petare. This is a city, the really, really tough city. It's one of the most dangerous ghetto worldwide. Almost no one from there, they can make it big. And now I'm, I'm really happy and excited to represent all these people. La especialidad que tengo para ganar es ser oportunista en este caso, que es buscar el momento oportuno para poder meter un golpe efectivo. I'm 100% confident I'm gonna make the win. I'm gonna find the win no matter what. If Fernando wants to bring this fight to a kickboxing fight, he's more than welcome. He wants to go to karate and, be, and do his karate. We're ready for that. El luchador contra el que voy a pelear, sé que es Diego. No sé mucho de él. I'm gonna search him to finish him. So if he thinks it's an easy fight, he's gonna have a little big problem with me. Diego Avendaño, as you heard from Bass earlier, originally from Venezuela. A lot of very accomplished training, a lot of mixed training in lots of different arts as well. Extremely aggressive, very good with the spinning kicks. Two-time Venezuelan national kickboxing champion on top of that. A lot of people really expecting big things from this six-foot welterweight. And his opponent, Fighting tonight out of the red corner. Welcome, Fernando, the brave animal. Paz. Oh, Fernando Paz, hailing out of uh, Almagro in Spain. Very aggressive and strong fighter indeed. Had a good five-week training camp running into this one. Looking to rebound from a loss, though. Dropped a unanimous decision to Vasily Antiki. Uh, September of last year, back in season three, had a couple of good wins before that, including a great knockout win over Alexandra Bodevain uh, at KC Evolution all the way back in 2019. Uh, a lot of people here in the crowd to support Diego Amandano, the samurai. There you see, 35 years old, he's significantly taller than his opponent tonight. He's going to have an uh, arm and leg reach advantage. The bravest animal, Fernando Paz, a full four inches shorter than Avendano tonight. Honey badger. Bravest animal. Certainly could be. <laughs> Honey badger don't care. <laughs> That's a great clip. Your referee for this one is Mark Goddard. Thankfully. Well, Karate Combat control. is excited to announce that we'll be back in Orlando on the back lot of Universal Studios on Saturday, December 17th for Karate Combat 37 live, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Tickets on sale now at karate.com forward slash tickets. Get them before they sell out. Started off with a uh, nice low kick from Abadano. Very interesting stance from Abadano. It's bladed, but with a very square torso. And it's fainting. Oh, good hard low kick there. Oh. Nice doubling up on that left hook coming forward from Paz. Oof. Oh, man. Paz showing some good boxing. Yeah, Paz cross hook. That's nice. Oh, nice, beautiful kick. Away from the the right to the groin. Over there. Yep. Away from the corner, please. Thank yeah, Paz said he doesn't feel that his experience, that his uh, opponent has the necessary Thank experience in this full contact environment, Ooh. and that one, ooh, just a little bit low. How low ooh. can you go? Unintentional. 
but you're seeing straight away Paz is trying to immediately press forward, land the multiple shots, not yes. just the single shot in it and out. You know, really come forward and keep those shots going. Recovering here. Good. Getting ready to head back in there. Yeah. Here we go. Be careful. Be careful. Okay. Well, Avendano taking that time to recompose himself. Probably hoping to slow pass down a little bit. He had an excellent start throughout this first minute. Diego seeming a little stiff out there. My man Fernando is definitely putting those, those combinations together. A lot of times in karate, it's the one shots that count. But here in karate combat, you can't just throw one shot. You got to throw those combinations. And Paz got some power in his hands also. So he needs to watch out, Avedano. Oh, nice head nice. kick. Very clean head kick by Diego. Avendano measuring again, but Paz trying to keep the pressure up top. Oh, there's the right hand from Fernando. Man, he's got some heat behind those strikes. Yeah, he's great. His cross hook is a really yes. good combination for him. Should throw a body head, or head body, left hook, right body shot. Go for a liver, somebody said. And Valtellini is calling for a liver kick. There we go, and he throws it. That's nice, so he's listening. Again, going up that front side. Paz trying to move around the outside here. Eats a leg shot, but it's good response with the hands. Yes, because he's, again, he needs to set up his kicks. Yes. With the punches, then Paz can do that. The feints from Fernando is definitely Oh, my man, Diego, switching yeah. sides. Switching stance, going southpaw for a moment. Oh, nice pin. Nice body kick. They're back to the body dice. Yeah, there was like a stutter step in the tempo as well. Paz fire in the left hands, goes that right straight to the body. I yes. love that. I, I knew you were going to have that. Yeah. <laughs> because that sets up headshots, you know. Oh, it does. Again, oh, look at the left of the body shot again. Really mixing up those left hands, and what a good wow, round. What a way for Fernando close. Paz. Fernando's yeah. combinations working up and down the body. Like you said, wow. boss, that if you want to hit somebody in the head, go to the body first. That's it. This is the family of uh, Diego Avendano watching him compete for the first time here on US soil. But it's uh, a, a tentative first round for him, I feel. I feel so too. Yeah, because he can count it right away from the get-go, you know, yes. and that stops yourself in your tracks. Now, Bazooka Joe in the corner there, trying to give him some advice. Let's have a look at some of the replays here. There's the high kick. He just missed. Good right from Paz. He, he kept doubling up that left hand several yes. times. Diego's throwing a lot of pop shots. He's not, not putting combinations together like Fernando is. So he's got to let those hands and feet fly. Yeah, he's throwing the body shots. I love that liver left hook. Woo! And a left hook liver. I like Ooh. that one as well. Second of time. So into the second round here, another three minutes on the clock. Black pants for Fernando Paz, white pants for Diego Avendano. Three more bouts coming your way this evening. Of course, the debut of James Vick in karate combat coming up next against George Perez. Good catch of the kick from Paz. Opportunity for ground and pound, working the body again here. You see, I love it because that means he's thinking. Yes. I love the feints from Fernando. He gets a good, big reaction out of Diego. He's got to use that to his advantage. Faint and then go. OK, 
can see him waiting to pull the trigger. Any kick that he's going to throw is going to counter that. Oh, oh good low kick. kick. I heard that. Nice return, though. Oh, beautiful cross liver. And oh, again. Okay. Oh. And going up top now. Oh. Chasing Abandano. Oh. And he gets it. A huge knockout for Abandano. Pass has aye, ended aye, in the aye. night aye. of Diego okay, Abandano. Okay, okay. Wow. My goodness. Wow, you see that is working the body, working the head. That's setting your opponent up. Cross liver, it started with that. I mean, being all over the place just confuses your opponent. It's very simple. You got to be everywhere. Has what no idea where flurry. those strikes are going. It's those body shots that set it up. That's you were correct. It. Wow. Some big power. I cannot wait to see a replay of that. Mm. Well, Fernando Paz just checking on Avendano here, who is thankfully back to his feet in fairly speedy order. Vicious knockout from Fernando. Oh, and you can hear Avendano doesn't realize that he got knocked out. Look at that. Mark Goddard just says, come get your fighter to his corner. Let him know what happened. Wow. I have been Bonk. there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's the replay, guys. Oh, and then the body <laughs> shot. The body just, just for fun. Let's have a look. Here we go. Overhead. Left set it up. Bonk. It's a one-two. It's a clean one-two over the top. And now look the body shot. Bonk. Oh. The solar plexus also beautifully wow, timed. Wow, look at this. Boom. Boom. Over top of that check hook. Fernando Paz not worrying about the kicks all wow. that much. Woo. No, oh, his, uh, ooh. Well, I guess we thought it was a good knockout as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our winner by knockout in the red corner, Fernando okay. the Brave Animal. I'm going to have Boss push me off the stage. Fernando Paz is your winner by knockout. He's going to improve his karate combat record to a very impressive three and one in this welterweight division. The second clean knockout he's had. He's going to head up pit side and get a word with our broadcast colleague, Alex Wendling. And I am with Fernando Paz. Congratulations. What a nasty knockout that was. Was that exactly how you pictured it ending? Eh, felicidades, Fernando. Eso te quedó demasiado de duro. Entonces, así es como lo imaginaste. Sí, sí, había soñado muchas noches con, el, con este momento de apretar en el momento que viste la más mínima debilidad y es que sabía que lo tenía. Le pinchaba abajo, que es que pincha a todos mis compañeros de gimnasio y dicho, a este también lo voy a pinchar. Así que va por nosotros. Yes, it's exactly how I've been dreaming of. Once I made the hits and the kicks, I knew I had him weak and I knew I had the shot. Let's go. <laughs> and you were a karate combat vet. Who do you want next and what do you see yourself in this division doing? Eres un veterano de karate combat. Entonces, ¿con quién quieres pelear en contra y qué te ves haciendo después? No tengo ninguna duda de que quiero pelear con Joshua Cuajaye, con todos mis respetos, pero ese cinturón se viene para el magro. <laughs> Definitely, I want to fight with Joshua Cuajaye, and that title is mine. No, no disrespect to him, but that title is mine. Wow, calling out Joshua the Preacher Cuajagan. Good call out there, my friend. Give it up, Fernando Paz. Let's take a look at some of the stats from that bout. Punches landed. Felt like way more than 26 to me, I've got to say, but 26 to 5 indeed. Outstriking 31 to 20. Fernando Paz, clean as you like with the hands. Let's go ahead and head down pit side and get some analysis from our friend and colleague, Mr. Robin Black. Th thanks, guys. Man, that really was a wild, wild finish. You know, fighting is best expressed in an optimal balance of tension and relaxation. And you saw Avin Daniel was very, very tense early in that fight. Maybe the pressure, maybe because of how much it means to him. But Paz, on the other hand, relaxed and unencumbered. So he was able to flow freely, take the shots a little bit easier, and land the shots a little more intensely. Put everything into every one of those punches. Beautifully 
nicely done. He had a little time off. We can see how much he has imp improved. That was a wonderful performance by Fernando Paz. Thank you, Robin Black, Roy Jones Jr. in the house tonight, enjoying boop, boop. all of the action pit side. Yeah, absolutely great to have him here. Um, sorry, I'm just thinking I'm going to have to go steal a photo <laughs> at some point. <laughs> we have to, I have um, to. You have to as well. <laughs> yeah. um, let's just uh, have a quick think about that fight. Uh, tough one for Diego Avendano, got yes. put on the back foot straight out of the gate. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, we saw last time the power that he has, you know, and now he, he looked way more compact, he was way more composed, going for the body they had, the liver left hook landed, the cross landed, the cross to the body, even when the takedown came, he hit a body shot as well. He's just all over the place, and that's how he win fights. Yeah, exactly. A any any thoughts from you, Stephen, on that battle? Yeah, I mean, Diego, he was pop shot in his opponent. It was the combination for Fernando that got the W for him and set up that knockout. So he got the W, and we'll see what's next for him. Yeah, very, uh, very exciting indeed. Of course, you've heard from us that Karate Combat 37 is coming your way uh, December 17th from right here, Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida. One of the guys who's going to be fighting on that card is Pitside with Alex Wendling. This is Samuel Erickson. Yes, I am with Samuel Erickson right now, and yes, he does have a fight coming up December 17th. But first, we got to talk about some of the action that happened tonight. What is your favorite moment of tonight? I mean, I guess all the fights are my favorite moments, but there are some, you know, some of the, like the speeding kicks and this last fight that was just this overhand cross. It's just, you know, when you're pit side and you hear all the hits, it's different. It's different. When you see it on the screen, it's one thing. When you see someone punch and you hear the hit land, it's fucking different, yeah. It's definitely different. It's just, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I think we can cuss on here, right? <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> and you have a fight coming up. Are you getting some inspiration on the knockouts that you want to do yourself? Um, well, of course I have my game plan, but basically what I... My, mo my inspiration here is just, you know, see fights, you know? So it kind of itching in my body. I want to fight too. Um, but I have some weight to cut. I need to go home, finish my fight camp for like five, six weeks, and then I come back here, and I will try to, you know, just bring all these moments from here, from today, and keep them in mind, and just, you know, be the best version when I show up December 17th. Well, we cannot wait for December 17th. You're such an inspiration to so many people. Thank you so much. Thank we'll send it back to you guys. All right. <laughs> My name is James Vick. My fight name is The Texecutioner, and I'm from the great state of Texas. I was raised pretty rough, um, come from a poor background. I grew up uh, in a family of, of a lot of hunters and fishers. My theory with hunting and how it's similar to martial arts is basically a still target is a dead target. That's why I like to move a lot when I'm fighting and I try to stay out of the way of stuff, so I kind of look at it that way. My family has been very supportive of me. I'm the youngest of six kids, and I actually have a twin brother as well. I put James Jr. and Taekwondo and Jiu-Jitsu about two, two and a half months ago, so he's new in the journey. He's only four and a half, but he's loving it. It's a good experience for him, and I just love martial arts, and I want to make sure my kids train martial arts. Getting involved in martial arts was several things, I believe. And I was in several street fights, watching a lot of action movies and stuff. Like, we were really poor. We didn't have cable in our house. So all we did was watch movies. In 2005, I graduated high school, and that was the year the Ultimate Fighter reality show came out. And I saw it, and I was, I was instantly in love, and I was like, I can totally do this. And this would be a good time to start pursuing martial arts, and now here I am. Karate is my favorite sport now uh, for combat sports that, I, that I've been doing. And I wanted to fight for karate combat since the first time I saw it uh, help coach my sensei in one of his fights. The energy in there was pretty electrifying. Witnessing the karate combat live event for the first time was amazing, exciting, and just something different that I've never seen before, honestly. The competition level from what I've seen is, is very good. I don't think I'm gonna have to adjust a bunch to compete in karate combat. Some of the techniques the guys do, I have to be aware of that, but I'm a real karate person. I'm not just a, a fake karate guy. I've been doing Olympic point style karate for five years with my sensei Adrian, and I had two and a half years of Taekwondo, so I'm very familiar with traditional martial arts and high level traditional martial artists, so I, I feel like I'm gonna be prepared for whatever happens. I just look at it as a new challenge and like a new beginning.
I've been under lots of pressure my whole career, and I'm not worried. I'm just going to keep training hard and doing what I need to do to win, and that's all I'm worried about. Our event tonight is brought to you by C4. Ignite your power with C4. Yeah, they need a lot of power because a little slow in the move, right? Those zombies. Right. You know, you can get those head <laughs> kicks in there, and uh, once they get amped up, they might be a little bit hard to deal with. Uh, James Vic, George Perez is your next bout coming up next in the welterweight division. Uh, Bus, James Vic. A lot to say about this guy. Obviously, MMA standout. He's now refocused himself, absolutely in love with karate, dying to make his debut here tonight. You know, he's he, this guy's all over the place. He's got great kicks. Like he says, he has traditional background in karate. He says his opponent's biggest weapon is his power and his hands. He says, but he doesn't have a lot of stamina to back it up, so he's just going to let him wind out, and then he's going to take him down. He says he's going to use uh, counter punches, and he's going to use takedowns as well. Yeah, and one of the things that happens with these, these strong debutants, Stephen, that we know they're going to come in, they're going to be very prepared, they tend to get pretty experienced opponents straight off the bat. George Perez is one of those four fights uh, so far with us, but two and two record, a little bit inconsistent. Yes, George Perez, he says he feels great, he's focused, his opponent has the reach on him, so he's been working a lot on his kicks. He says he feels a little bit like David and Goliath, and <laughs> he's David. <laughs> oh yeah, that's for sure. Oh, uh, this is a really fun one. James Vick and uh, George Perez is your next Battle. Let's take a look at the head-to-head. -head. We have got a debutant tonight. He is taking on the fast Jorge Perez. It's a TKO victory. Game set match, Jorge Perez. I'm Jorge Perez. Also known as Pra. I was born to be in the pit. In my childhood, I was always a fighter. In the barrio, I fought with everything. My fight has always been very aggressive. He won two fights by way of a hand. By fantastic knockouts. I'm so fast that you will never see me coming, but I will feel the impact later, like a fast punch. Mike Tyson is the My name is James Vick, the Texecutioner. I have a lot of full contact experience, but I'm not just a flat-footed boxer. I have real karate techniques and real Taekwondo techniques that I think he doesn't realize I have. He's gonna be shocked by some of the stuff I can do. I have a lot of weapons available. I have knees and I have a reach and I know how to use it. I've studied my opponent, George Perez, and he's very aggressive. He knows his opponent is aggressive, but he says, so am I. He's not coming to lose a decision or win a decision. Estoy listo para derribar los muros. He's just coming in to kill or be killed. I have a very similar mentality. Espero que esté activo y listo para tirar una buena guerra. May the best man win. Fans, turn your attention to the blue door and welcome the executioner, James Vick. A lot of support in the house for James Vick. Obviously hailing from the United States, fighting out of Fort Worth, Texas. As you heard him say before, he was here once cornering his uh, his karate coach, Adrian Galvan, at Karate Combat. A lot of full contact experience. Uh, look, 14 fights with uh, UFC before moving on to some boxing and now karate. Very, very dangerous human being. And welcome out of the red corner. He is Jorge El Pra. George Perez, very fired up for this one. As we mentioned, he has a bit of that win-loss pattern. He's, he's dropping down in weight from the middleweight division down to this 165-pound welterweight class for this one. Actually, his last win was a, a loss, a knockout to Igor de Castaneda, who we're going to see up next in the co-main event tonight. That was back August of last year, but he has two very good TKOs, or one KO as well. Uh, all the way back to 2018, one of the elder statesmen of karate combat here. Hey, papa day, papa day, papa day, papa day, 
<laughs> yeah, representing the Dominican Republic is El Pra, George Perez. But this is the Texecutioner, James Vick. Substantially, and I mean substantially, the taller fighter. He's going to have, uh, I think, a nine-inch height advantage, technically, on paper with this one. 35 years old. Still a young buck. Yeah, 34 years old for George Perez. You see that mixed record, two and two, representing the Dominican Republic. His first time in the welterweight division, but there you go. Five foot six faces six foot three. Okay. Mark, gonna... Mark Goddard is your referee for this one. Ready, ready. Oh, Follow Karate man. Combat to learn more about upcoming events and keep up with all of our fighters on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter and Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and of course you can get all the news and sign up at karate.com. White stop, pants stop, for Vic, stop, stop, black stop. pants for El Pra. Hey, come here, come here. Do not yes, swear. Yes, sir. Do not swear yes, in this picture, yes, you understand? Yes, I will yes, see sir. I will deal with. Relax, James. <laughs> Leg kick Keep above the, the knee, below, yeah? Below the knee. Explain. Go up, go along this. Okay, below the knee. Just be careful, okay? So, our referee, Mark Goddard, just making sure Ready? that Fight. Perez is clear on his target zones and they're back underway here. Two minutes 30 left on the clock. Both guys in an open stance. For a second there, uh, James Vick was kind of circling away from his, uh, Perez's power hand. Good catch of the kick, going low on return. That forces a switch of the stance for Perez. He does fight in a switch stance a lot of the time, moving back and forth, but so does James Vick. James Vick, in the preview that we saw when he was kneeing the back, he told us that he loves knees and he's been working on it. So oh. let's see if he can throw around. And of course, knee. he's taller, so you know that when the knees come up, they're landing with so much more impact. Especially when your opponent's blitzing like that because their body's open. And that's yeah. perfect time to throw that knee to the body. You know, we have to talk about reach advantages. You know, how much more tiring is it to punch that far upward the whole time? Oh, it, I mean, it's got to be tiring. But the thing is, my man Perez has got to close the gap if he's going to land. As long as he stays out in the, in the open, just like so, at, at Dix's range, I think it's going to be a bad night for him. Yep. There you see a good couple of shots from Perez, but just missing by several inches. There's the knee already. There's the knee. Lovely distance management from Vic there, just slipping out of the way. And again, he's very much in control right now. Oh, Ooh. there's that knee again. That knee is yes. there. Well timed. And that was the intent of the knees being added to the rules, was that striking knee. You know, not so much the clinch work. Still filling out process in that first round. Nice side kick from Vic. Oh. That's what you have to watch out there. Yep. When you throw that knee, those hands tend to drop. Yeah, good work from Perez to find the target there. Vic still pressing forward, though. That's a nice kick there. Good low calf kick from Perez. Oof. Again, Vic trying to find the mark with the knee, but we're going to see out the first round here. Looked like Perez had him hurt there for a second with that with the, the left hand. I wonder how those knees oh, were yeah. hurting Perez, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, they were solid knees. Yeah, very tough to tell. Let's have a look at some of the replays here. That was the initial kick where James Vick's calling out the missed target. Oh. That was, oh, that was a good right hand. Wow. Yep. One of the more significant strikes of the first round there. Perfectly timed. And there's the Ooh. knee coming in again. Cannot take too much of those to the body. 
those wear and tear. Former UFC Slowly champion and uh, karate combat sensei, Lyoto Machida, pit side tonight. He, of course, is going to be supporting Bruno Souza, who's up in our main event a little bit later against Edgar Scrivers. Second round underway here. It's executioner James Vick in the white pants. El Pra, George Perez in the black pants. Perez says he's been working a lot on those low kicks, and he's definitely putting them to good use in the second round. Right off the bat, throwing leg kicks. Yeah, if you were in the corner of uh, James Vick, what would you have told him between rounds? I would say set, set that knee up, you know, as, as a counter it's good, but as an attack, as an, set it up with a hook and then throw the Ooh. set it up with shots. Well, that jumping, snapping front kick. And the karate come, but also even when there's not a lot of action on both sides, the one who's pushing the fight. Yes. We'll win the fight, so keep that in mind. Always. Yeah, uh, pick control. Aggression is a key criteria here at Karate Combat. Aggression and effective striking. Ooh, looking for the spin there. Oh, there's nice roundhouse. <laughs> Perez definitely a little more active this, in this second round. Vic has got to come at him. He's got to let those hands and feet fly. He's got to let it go. Yep. George Especially per with his George boxing. Per yeah, yep. George, George Perez, a uh, multi-sport athlete, was actually offered a, a professional baseball contract earlier in his sports career, turned it down in order to stay in martial arts. Wow. Good block of the kick from him. Approaching the final minute oh, of this second round here, and it's a... Good little sidekick, stabbing sidekick from Vic. I mean, there was a lot of questions, wasn't there? Was how how well would James Vic have trained for this? Would he still have the fire that he had when he was, you know, tearing people apart in mixed martial arts? Yep. Would he still have the snap? Oh, and he's, he's perhaps got a little bit to settle in here. You're not seeing a whole lot of hands from Mike Vic. You're only seeing the sidekicks, keeping his opponent at bay. He knows, he knows uh, Perez has got some dangerous and power in those hands. Yeah, that's what he said. You know, he's yes. got big power and especially in his hands. So I think he's a little skittish about that. But he's coming forward. He's keeping yes. pushing. But he needs to start setting those kicks up with hand strikes. Well, final 10 seconds, they're tussling in the clinch. They're going to be separated and probably no time to re-engage. We're going to go to a third and final round here. Even though Mike Vick was pushing the pace, he, was, he had good he had good pit control, but I think I think uh, Perez definitely was was throwing the the, the, the better landed shots. That's for yeah, sure. The, yeah, the range management there failed him on that. Uh, he, he dodged the spinning kick and then ate the full force of that body kick. Good work from Perez to close the distance again, going up top. This is a bit of a conundrum for, for James Vick here. I don't think either fighter can really assume they're ahead. You got to start working. That's right, pumping the jab, pumping those lead leg side kicks, front kicks. I'm guessing something involving kill him or death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll do it. <laughs> Uh, so, third round underway here. All still to play for. Perez looking confident in this third round. Yeah. Keep the kicks low. I was just going to say, that was the same <laughs> kick as he threw the very first time. Very hesitant, my James Vick. Very hesitant. Yeah, 
Yeah. It, almost, it, it almost feels like Vic's trying to counter strike rather than take the initiative. Right. Which he shouldn't do. He should put more output there. Set the kicks up with hand strikes. He's got great boxing. He did a, little, a few professional boxing matches, won those as well. Right. If you notice, when he strikes, he's throwing the techniques, but he's already backing out before they even land. Yeah, right. Perez using his ninja skills to get out of there. a minute and a half left oh. here again Vic tries that knee Perez winging the shots up top okay time stop stop stop James that side corner here corner here there there well let's take a look back at that errant low blow it's okay. definitely a shin finding the uh, Finding the Go southern ahead. regions. <laughs> yeah, the southern regions. Oh! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's straight down. Well, no oh. recovery for Perez. They're straight back at it. Final minute on the clock here. Vic again going to the body with the knees. Perez going up high with that left hand. Right, but that's the pressure James Vic needs, and yes. he's got to press forward here. At least you feel like he does. He's got less than a minute to get something done. Both guys do. He's trying to back him up in that corner, but not do anything with it. Body shots do anything. Cross body hook, head, wrap it up with a kick. Ah, well, a big Uchimata off the wizard there. Ooh, it's good a big round, round of pound, pound here, and Ooh. this is good. No. Wow, and that was a full five seconds of ground and pound. <laughs> Perez seems a little bit surprised that was allowed, but it certainly is. Vic stayed on his feet. We're going to see the end of this bout. We're going to go to the judge's decision. James Vic thinks he's done enough. It's certainly going to be close. Well, Mark Goddard warning him it may not be over because, of course, there is the possibility of that sudden death overtime round. That's if uh, the judges, enough of the judges, score it a draw or a split decision and they have an additional box to tick to say we feel it's actually too close to call. Oh, there was the knee. knee. Golly. Oh, and here comes the throw. Yeah, and look at that. Wrapped up the other arm, stepped him through. Good Uchimata, but popped straight back up to his feet, had the awareness. This was his best moment. Hard shots. But yeah. was it enough to get the W? <sighs> yep. Okay, if that guy honks the horn one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, the judges are still deliberating. Uh-oh. Are we going to get a, a fourth round? I'm our judges have reached a unanimous decision. Oh. And the winner from the red corner, Jorge Perez! Uh, James Vick is not happy. He storms up the side of the pit and then thinks better of himself and heads back down for a show of respect with his opponent, who is victorious. It is. George Perez, and again, the, inc the inconsistency, but in a positive way, right. happens for George Perez. Win-loss, win-loss, back with a win tonight. We see a shot of James Vick heading off there. George Perez is up pit side for a few words with Alex Wendling. George Perez, it was a David versus Goliath story. I was a little bit scared I was going to get hit in the head with a stone there. But do you feel like you accomplished that David and Goliath story? So, Jorge, esto ha sido una pelea tipo David y Goliath. Yo me sentí asustada, creía que me iban a pedrar. Pero ahora, ¿tú sientes que has, has hecho esa y has cumplido eso de David y Goliath? 
Bueno, eh, trabajé, hice esa promesa, dije que iba a vencer al gigante Goliat y lo, gracias a Dios lo hice, como está escrito en la Biblia. Well, I made a promise and I defeated Goliath, as said in the Bible. And there were a few moments where James Vick was kind of nodding his head saying you didn't, you weren't hitting him clean. Did you think you were getting some really clean shots in there? So, había unos momentos que David parecía que te estaba como que cucando y diciendo que no le diste, pero tú te sen, tú sentiste que no, no lo estaba haciendo, o cómo te sentiste en esos momentos? Bueno, no desesperarle. Si él dice que no le llegaban, porque por algo fue, pero yo sí sentía que lo estaba golpeando bien. Bueno, y para él, my respect for you, James. Y nada, no, para adelante. Respect all around. Congratulations, George Perez. Give it up. Let's take a look at the fight stats for that. Well, a little bit of an error there, I think, in the uh, computing. <laughs> Got to say, there's a little bit more action than that in that bout. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> head straight down pit side. Check in with our pit side analyst, Robin Black. Thanks, guys. Just a real fascinating dynamic in that very, very close fight. James had the longer weapons. He's got the reach advantage, and he used his kicking tools and his knees. The key, if the if the judges saw it for George, was when James would retract either the knee or the kick. In that moment, he's on one leg, and that's when George would find the chin with the weapons of the hands. Fascinating dynamic. Longer kicking, closer needing to move in, counterintuitively pushing through the fire and land. The judges saw it for George. It was a wonderful fight. Thank you to both those gentlemen for a good one. So a win for George Perez. Uh, James Vick, very disappointed with himself, yes. I think, that. Yeah, I would be also, but you know, he needed to throw more output there. I think he should have let his hands go. Uh, and, and then together with his kicks, that would have a little bit done uh, more damage because the big land, the strikes were landing by Perez. I agree. Counters. He hesitated a lot during that fight. He was pressuring forward, but didn't do anything with it. Yeah, so uh, hopefully we'll see him back again. It'll be very interesting to see what happens there. Uh, next fight coming up, we're going to talk about it in a minute. That's in the middleweight division. So this is probably a good time for Alex Wenlin to check in with our middleweight champion, Ross Levine. And I am with the homie, the middleweight champion, Ross Levine. How is it in this environment? You haven't been in this environment when it's spooky, so what's it like? Ooh, the spookiness is crazy. I mean, of course, the environment is always nuts at Karate Combat. We got zombies walking around. We got everybody dressed up. We got outfits. It's Halloween weekend, and we got some crazy fights, too. It's so happy. It's so great that you're here right now. And we have another event happening December 17th. I know nothing's official, but you look healthy. You look ready to go. I mean, is there anyone you want to call? Out. Yeah, I mean, I'm here for everybody. You know, I'm the champ. I don't get to choose what comes next. But in my mind, championship is over. I'm ready to take on all comers. There's a really good fight coming up that I want to watch. Maybe I'll get the winner. Maybe I don't. There was a good 205 fight. Maybe I go up and take that. But we'll see what happens. I'm Like you said, I'm healthy. I'm ready, training hard, ready to go. And I know you're good friends with Raymond Daniels, so that's never a call out that you're comfortable making. No, I mean, I want Raymond to do well. I mean, Raymond should be the welterweight champion in no time. So what's the what's better than having two sport karate American champions to go and run karate combat? So I hope maybe we can get on the same card and nice. co-main event, main event. Let's make it happen. I like the idea of that. Co-main, main event. That sounds like a good one to me. How about you guys? What do you think about that? I mean, I'll take it. What do I'll you think, Bass? Oh, 100%. <laughs> I mean, Ross Levine, man. I love that guy. He's so methodical. I mean, it's, it's pitch control. He knows exactly where he is. The way he finished off Igor de Castaneda the last time, insane. Well, the crowd are having a good time here. We've got a couple more coming your way. Let's take a closer look at the two men up in our co-main event tonight, Igor de Castaneda and Franklin Mina. He is a very special karateka. Big, powerful, long, and rangy. Y bueno, yo empecé el karate a los 12 años. Le dije a mi padre que, que quería competir. Me dijo, si quieres competir, tienes que entrenar. Entrené y salí a mi primera competición y desde entonces, pues no parado, empecé a los 12. When he attacks, he attacks with intense aggression and he really tries to get behind that right hand. Oh! You see how they from Igor de Castaneda. 
Bueno, pues ahora que estoy en Karate Combat, eh, mi ilusión es esa, ¿no? Colgarme en el cinturón. Igor, tarde o temprano, eh, estará arriba de la categoría. Hasta que no lo logre, no voy a, no voy a parar. Te vieron muy pronto, pero aprenderé más hasta que llegue a ser un día campeón. ¡Y vamos! Yo vengo de un pueblo pequeño llamado Inta, donde a tempranas edades yo empecé el fútbol. Me tenía que defender. Ahí me, era cuando me di cuenta que desarrollé mi agresividad. Un día mi hermano llegó del entrenamiento, me preguntó, ¿quieres entrenar? Me dijo, ¿qué? Okay. Desde el primer día que empecé los entrenamientos me hicieron hacer combate. Y me dijo, wow, eres increíble. Y esa agresividad que había conseguido en el fútbol me di cuenta que era para este deporte de contacto. Toda la gente de mi pueblo me apoya. Muchos de ellos no saben la realidad que uno como deportista se pasa. Cada pelea es a muerte. En el entrenamiento está el resultado. Y si nosotros entrenamos como guerreros, el resultado es el mejor que vamos a obtener. Cuando aprendí a controlar mi agresividad, empecé a ganar. Me di cuenta que tenía mis brazos y mis piernas muy fuertes. Es por eso que hoy me dicen la bala. Yo siempre soy el número uno. Yo soy el campeón. So that is your co-main event coming up next. Igor de Castaneda and Franklin Mina. Uh, Bass Wonderboy, let's talk about these two uh, big, big middleweights, both of them. Bass Franklin Mina uh, looked very, very fast, very, very dynamic, but he's coming off in an unfortunate match for him against uh, one of the best ever, Raymond Daniels. Yeah, but he said after fighting Raymond Daniels, he's not afraid <laughs> of anybody anymore. So he learned to keep his guard up better. That, that's so what he's going to do. And then he says he's going to use knees a lot. He's also in an incredible shape and he will counter the hand strikes from his opponent. So, uh, and Igor's got the big hand. Yeah, his opponent tonight, Igor de Castaneda, the Iberian bull. Uh, as you probably saw there, a, a very big and, and powerful guy. Uh, but Steven, he's coming off a loss to our middleweight champion, Ross Levine. Yes, Igor de Castaneda also says he's going to use his knees. Whoop, whoop. He says he's got some really good setups for this fight. Didn't go into a whole lot of details of what those setups are, but he says he's more than ready to go out there and rock and roll. His opponent likes his left kick, and he's going to be countering that left kick. Yeah, really exciting uh, co event event coming your way. Uh, our pit side analyst, Mr. Robin Black, is putting himself right in harm's What? way next to the zombies no. pit side. Uh, Robin, what do you think of this co-main event? Yeah, guys, this one is a beautiful, beautiful contest. There is an elegant simplicity to it when you look at their characteristics and you take their attributes and compare and contrast them. Igor is powerful. He gathers and harnesses and releases energy through his punches super explosively. One of the great highlights in, in karate combat history is that rich hand of his connected to the ground. Franklin Mina, on the other hand, is light and quick. He moves. He'll take you apart death by a thousand cuts. That beautiful simplicity, speed versus power comes together here. My friend Connor once said, precision beats power and timing beats speed. Everyone can be beaten, but these two match up beautifully. Sensei Boss, Sensei Wonderboy, Josh, you guys ready for this one? Ooh, yes we I'm, are. I'm ready for this one. Robin, you ready for this one? Oh, yes. Don't get bit up there now, watch out. Yeah, cover, cover your neck, buddy. Uh, right, head to head time. This is Igor de Castaneda and Franklin Mina. Frankly, Mina versus Igor de Castañeda, the number one contender fight in our middleweight division. Si yo gano esta pelea, tengo que retar al campeón. But de Castañeda is not agreeing with the stoppage. Te vieron muy pronto. Claro que quiero un rematch. Vamos! The Iberian bull from Spain is mentally a giant. Yo no me rindo nunca. Lo voy a dar todo hasta el final. What does the Iberian bull have? A big, strong punch. Absolutely shut the lights out of Jorge Perez. But the punch is simply a tool. It's about the artist that used it. A wonderful martial arts. He's the Iberian bull. He's freaking strong. He said he worked hard on fighting with less emotion because he's a very emotional guy. I don't know my head, and I know that I'm capable of everything. Oh, Bobby! Oh, You don't get a nickname Bullet for nothing, right? 
pure speed. Shotokan specialist. One of the best in the division. I've seen him pulling some crazy punches and kicks off. They call him the bullet because those shots come fired out of a gun. Una victoria para mí significa muchísimo. Pasado por muchas cosas. He comes in off a loss. Better believe that he wants to rectify, set the record straight. Y hoy más que nunca quiero ganar esa victoria. Sé que lo puedo lograr. Yo tuve rivales que me habían complicado y esto es algo diferente. Es una persona que es muy agresivo, y muy inteligente para pelear. Intuitively aggressive. He knows his opponent's dangerous, but he's back at 100% and ready. A mi oponente debe preocuparle mi rapidez. Por más de parte que sea él, yo soy el mejor. Voy a aniquilar a mi enemigo. Voy a buscar el caos, que es muy importante para mí. Es mi ilusión es esa, ¿no? Colgarme en el cinturón, pero hasta que no lo logre no voy a, no voy a parar. Franklin versus Igor is gonna be a banger of a fight. You're gonna be in for a treat. Boy, am I excited for this one. Let's go ahead and introduce that blue corner. This is Franklin Mina. Karate Combat fans, get ready, get set. It is time for the co-main event. First tonight, fighting out of the blue corner. Welcome, Franklin the Bullet Me. Representing Ecuador, this is Franklin the Bullet Mina. Very experienced here at Karate Combat. Three and three is his mixed record here. Shotokan practitioner. As you mentioned, Bass, you know, had a tough one last time out against Raymond Daniels. He said he's worked a lot on power and stamina for this fight. His opponent fighting tonight out of the red corner. He is the Iberian Bull, Igor And you want to see a fighter who's always in shape. Igor yeah. de Castaneda is that man. And always on. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like it's an apt nickname. He, he's a bull of a human being. Three and three is his record as well. Back for the seventh time here at Karate Combat. So this is the tail of the tape for Franklin Mina, hailing from Quito in Ecuador. 40 inches in the leg, standing five foot ten at all. That's going to be a little bit of a disadvantage for him, as we'll see in a moment. Igor de Castaneda, very similar age, but a couple of inches taller. That couple of inches is translating to an advantage in the legs. Both just about hitting that middleweight mark of 185 pounds at the stare of Franklin Mina. Yeah, both of these guys know each other very well. They're very friendly with each other, but they said that friendliness is going to go tonight. <laughs> so let's see what happens. At the end of the day, it's business, baby. That's exactly it. Your referee for this co-main event is Wayne Spinola. You ready, sir? Karate Combat 36 is powered by Hedera. Touch of gloves, we're underway here. Oh. Three threes on the clock. Black pants for De Castaneda. White pants for Franklin Mina. And a fast start here. De Castaneda immediately started off with a, with a rear leg low yeah. kick. He's an emotional fighter, man, this guy. Didn't waste Super time. Super exciting. But Mina, man, he, when he blitzes, he's got so much freaky power. It's going to be a really good fight. Yeah, a good feint from Mina here. Ooh. A lot of movement from De Castaneda. Oof. But nice. Oh! oh he tries the head kick. Stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Just kind of ducked under. into that one. Oh! oh! oh! A huge right hand from Franklin Mina. He's swarming on De Castaneda, who has recovered very well indeed. It started working the body. How quick was that? Oh, I'm telling you, 
Big power. Wow, and as the Castaneda oh, flies back, he catches oh. Mina now. <laughs> yeah, do not count him out. I think he's recovered very quickly indeed. Wow. Well, ducking into that is the Castaneda. Now you see him checking the hips so the knees don't, don't come up. Oh, there it is again. Yeah, it's just right finding hand. the mark over the top. He rolled with it a little bit. I don't want to see that uppercut land on uh, if you're Franklin Mina. There's the horn again. You better yeah. get him. Oh, oh nice favor. Yeah, yeah got to be careful not to uh, yeah, guys, use the collar tie to punch. Hold there you okay, go. See, so okay. getting a warning from the referee for that. Here we go. Fight. Release his head. Release him. Release him. Back up. Back up. Fight. Mina definitely getting in the feel for this. That's uh, bright red hair with the emblazoned Karate <laughs> Combat logo on the side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, man, that right hand. Oh! Wide hooks. It's a good combination from the Castaneda. He's got to be careful not to duck up, up, up, into these, yeah. though. Getting in the clinch. Holding in the ink. You're not you allowed. James double leg. Okay. Just stop grabbing for a second. There we go. There we go. Ready? Fight. Igor is definitely ducking his head a lot as soon as Mina blitzes. You got to watch out for that knee then. Ten seconds. Just realized that spin hook kick was so close. <laughs> uh, good, interesting first round in the book. Some good moments for the Castaneda and for Franklin Mina to be fair. I'm looking forward to seeing a replay of that shot that dropped the Iberian Bull. How fast was that, though? The way he closed the gap on that, I didn't even see it. No, shot in the corners there. The Castaneda receiving some attention. Your zombie ring girls for the evening, letting you know the second round is coming your way very shortly. Replays up here, let's take a look. Yep, that was the first blitz. And thankfully for the Castaneda, it was on the way out, so to say. He was going with the punch. You see a lot of guys, especially to prevent damage down there, they put the head between the legs. Big head, but yep. Fires up. But they still got to watch out. Yep. Get this big right head. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Beautiful uppercut. Some Ready? very nice Fight. moments for Franklin Mina in that opening round. Okay. Another three minutes on the clock here, and De Castaneda again firing hard. Mina loves that over the top right hand. Uh, look at the way he outmaneuvered there. Yeah, really using uh, those 45 degree angled walls well. And again, the Castaneda is ducking up. into these clinch exchanges. There it is again. Stop, break me. Listen, you're ducking your head there. You're putting yourself there, okay? You keep bringing your head down there. Ready? Fight. He makes a point there. Yeah, the referee staying on top of this one. Oh! Oh! Nice left, left hook. Oh, counter back. You gotta love the decassinator when he gets hit. His instinct is to just go straight back. My time, my time, my time, my time, my time, my time. You all right? You need a second? You okay? Take a second. We might get a warning. You can't knee in the clinch. You can't knee in the clinch. You understand that, right? You can't knee. You no knee in the clinch. Okay? If you have your body, if you get your hands on him, you can't. No. You can't do it. Okay? Just stay right here. You're good. All right, here we go. Hi, in. Ready? Fight. Yeah, you've got to be careful of the knees in the clinch. You can't uh, tie up and pull your opponent onto it. It's got to be defined free movement strike in and of itself. I really like the angle change there from De Castaneda. Halfway point of the fight coming up now. Stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop. Thank you. Here we go. Fight.
Oh, the counter. Oh, and a good the power from the Castaneda. Tries to deal with the legs here for the ground to pound. He's got to get that knee off the ground, up, though. Up, up, up, up. Fight. Well, both these guys having to eat some to get some. Get off his head. Get off his head. Stop. Brick clean, brick clean. Fight. I don't really know what the game plan is for De Castaneda with those tie-ups. I have no clue either. I Very was just odd. thinking the same thing. Get, you know? I think that's his deterrent to that right hand. To he tries up. to go over top, and, and De Castaneda's going underneath it. But it puts him in a bad situation, bad, bad position. Yeah, and it limits his offense to fire back. Exactly. Push your hips back. Knee him. Final 30 seconds here. Pace just slowing a little bit. Mina's got a nice shiner under that right eye. Come on, come on. Now. Nice. Oh. 10 seconds. Nice rich hand. That was rich. So, second round in the books here. We're going to see. Another three minutes from these two gentlemen. Guys, who do you feel has kind of got the momentum with them at the moment, or, or do neither of them? Ah, oh, man, I, I, you know, Mina got that knockdown in the first round. De Castaneda got the knockdown in the second round. I feel like it's pretty no, even right now. It's all going to rely on that third round. Yep, I might be with you there. Replays coming your way. And that the was a nice sequence. Yeah, the Castaneda doing very well to land a couple of good shots there. Here you go, there's the right, and there was another one. Oof. <laughs> and there you see the cut just opened up under the uh, the eye of Franklin Mina. Wonderboy, you saw that from uh, a long way away. <laughs> that, I, I, I had no clue how you saw that. <laughs> no. I was going to say it when you said it because I go like, but I can't see. Eyes of an eagle. <laughs> oh, eagle eye. Oh. Uh, another three minutes on the clock, Ooh. and De Castaneda fired up for this one. Don't hold the head. Don't hold the head. Don't hold the head. Coming out with a, a lot Franklin. of intention. Don't hold the head, gentlemen. Look at me. Fight. Get off his head, get off his head, stop, stop, stop, get off his head, get off his head. Fight. Well, Mina, very stoic in the center of the, uh, the pit there. Again, the Castaneda stop, ducks underneath. Back up. Yeah. Back up I just, I don't, I don't quite know what the intention is. I don't know. Fight. I think it's what you said, uh, Steve, to let it overhand. That's right, the, the deterrent to that overhand. But Mina's overhand. Hey. It's a weird thing. Hmm. Again. There it is. Stop. Stop. Well, I looked Stop. for the pickup there. Okay. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Fight. Okay. I wonder if the referee is going to start dishing out some stronger <laughs> warnings now. Uh, we've got a minute and 45 left in this bout. Really, again, another one of these bounces that's all for the oh. taking. If somebody can land with significance, and it's Frank Mina doing so now. Oh, man. De Castaneda getting caught here and he's just going to eat stop, the stop, ground stop. and pound trying to hide his head between the legs that was big for mina that was big for mina yep. yeah any at this stage with just a minute and 20 left any significant action has got such profound consequences yes oh, oh! oh! oh! sure the I mean, De Castaneda has a couple of big knockouts already at Karate Combat. Uh, Franklin Mina is still down and he is still out. You are not going to see any cleaner short shots on the inside than that. Right down the pipe, right on that jaw. 
Well, Ooh. just when you thought, like, well, Mina was taking over a little yeah, bit, yeah. right? And then he's never out of the fight, this guy, right? Yeah, because you did always yeah. feel like a clean shot from this dude is, is like, lights out. Well, That's it. Yeah. Well, throughout the fight, in that clinch Look position, up, they would always break and back away, right? right? So what happened was, I think, like, Mina kind of thought they were, there was going to be a little breakaway there, right? But the referee didn't stop it, and Let's there goes the right hand. Well, this is what, some of the dropped? earlier replays oh, where yep. Mina blitzed at the start of this round. And this was where it looked like Mina was going to start taking yep. over a little bit. DeCastaneda perhaps a little bit worried here, hiding the head. But boy, did he come back with a vengeance. <laughs> yes, he did. All right, let's see it. Oh, oh no. it was just a just ducked his head. And, up high. Yeah, he probably, Man. like you say, he thought he was going to clinch him when he, he went low and ducked his head, and it was a fake out for this uh, this right hand. So maybe the know. whole first two rounds was a setup <laughs> that was supposed <laughs> yeah. to this thing. We'll, we'll give him that credit, but uh, yeah, frankly, Mina, that is out cold as you like. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's with the delayed reaction. That's how fast the uh, fast the shot was. Uh, look, the crowd are applauding because frankly, Mina has made his way back to the stool. Uh, we do, of course, have the best medical attention available. They are helping him recover. Just checking immediate concussion protocol. We're going to get him back to his feet. Wow. De Castaneda very happy as he recovers down there. I mean, it was a grueling fight for him. Really didn't have it all his own way by any means whatsoever. Good job, man. That was unhelpful. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of our co-man event tonight, out of the red corner, the Iberian Bull, Igor De Castaneda moves to four and three at Karate Combat, notches up another ridiculously clean knockout here. Beautifully placed right hand. Oh, man. Well, your winner, Igor De Castaneda, is up pit side with our broadcast colleague, Alex <laughs> Wendler. You look great. <laughs> Congratulations, Igor. That was a vicious knockout. Over here in the corner, we have someone watching your fight very closely. His name is Ross Levine. What does that make you feel? So, eso era una pelea bien furiosa y felicidades por la ganada. Pero hay está Ross Levine mirándote ahora. ¿Cómo te sientes? ¿Quién es Ross Levine? Who's Ross Levine? Damn, uh, so we don't remember who the middleweight champion is. I, I guess after that knockout, I would probably forget a lot of things too. This <laughs> night is for the best fighter in the division, Igor de Castaneda, the Iberian Bull. So this night, yeah, <laughs> we don't need a translation for that. I was just in shock. Igor, congratulations. You taught uh, Franklin Mina, he was coming at you hard. Did you know in that moment that you had to end it? Uh, Yo sabía que mi momento iba a llegar y tenía que ser paciente. Mina es durísimo, pero lo hemos sacado adelante gracias a mis dos entrenadores, que son César, que me está llevando ahora por el buen camino, y mi padre, que, que me ha desde pequeñito. So, Mina is a great fighter, and once I saw the opportunity, I took it. But all respect to Mina, who is a great fighter, but all thanks to my two trainers, my father and my brother. Wow, congratulations, Igor, a nasty knockout. Thank you so much. Vamos! Well, congratulations, Igor de Castaneda. Let's take a look at some of the stats from that bout, your co-main event. And Franklin Mina actually getting the better of almost everything, outlanding the Iberian bull, Igor de Castaneda, but it just takes the one, and the one shot is what de Castaneda landed. Let's go ahead and get some reflection on that co-main event from Robin Black. Thanks, guys. I was gonna say, 
go back and watch that moment, but you're not going to have to look for it because that is going to be viral. That knockout is going to be everywhere. But when you see it, what you will see is in the moment of separation, they're both firing. Mina is starting to throw a punch, and Igor is sitting down, connected to the ground, uh, his entire kinetic chain expressing that punch with totality of self. It is a sensitivity that he has developed where he knows that you are firing and when you are, he'll get his head to the outside and he'll land. That is the second time he has landed that exact thing. The, the first time it was wide, this time it was short, but it's the exact same sequence and he set it up beautifully. Ross Levine, you might be looking at a rematch, my friend. Uh, I'm totally cool with a rematch at some point for that oh, one. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, uh, <laughs> Bass, give us your thoughts on uh, Igor de Castaneda. Uh, well, he's never out of the fight, right? That we know. I mean, you know, that bull, he got stabbed a lot of times, but it doesn't matter. And then he will still put him on the horns, and that's what he did. Yeah, Wonderboy, what did you think about his performance tonight? I thought it was great. And to be honest with you, I think that head ducking was a little game plan of his to set up that right hand because he was yep. ducking his head down. It came over top of that right hand. Perfectly placed strike to the jaw, put him out. Yeah, excellent work from Igor de Castaneda. Uh, he moves to a very impressive four and three at Karate Combat. It is main event time, however. <laughs> we got a couple of profiles for you. Go ahead and meet in a little bit more detail Edgar Screevers and Bruno Souza. I am Bruno the Tiger Souza. I'm from Brazil, and that's where my story starts. In my hometown, I started judo. But when I moved to, to Belém, and I used to watch karate, and I asked to join karate. At some point, I was training judo and karate, but I was losing too much in judo and winning in karate. So I was like, you know what? I think judo is not for me. I'm going to stick to karate. The Machida family got me involved with karate. They are such a good example as human beings. Lucky to have them not only as senseis, but also as friends. He grew up with me and my brothers who are teaching him. When he turned seven years old, to start preparing him for the local karate tournament. As I had Sensei Shinzo as my sensei, Sensei Lyoto was the one that we were watching, we were following his role. I was looking at him being an undefeated world champion, and I thought like, oh, if he can do it, I can do it. Bruno Souza is a student of Lyoto Machida. He's coming from the Machida Karate School and he's been an LFA champion. I got involved with karate combat since the very first show. Lyoto watched it live and right after he called me, he's like, there is something really nice going on. He talked about karate combat, I watched it after and I was like, I was sure that one day I would be fighting for karate combat. My wife always said that she want to see me on those knees and with that belt fighting in the pit. And Maria Paula has been with me for five years now. She knows everything about the game. She understands so good. She can be even my body. Like sometimes I need to train. She just gear up and we train. You have someone that understands you so good. It makes the fighter's life so much easier. When you train too long MMA, you kind of go away from the roots. Fighting for the most important karate organization is bringing my real animal, my real spirit back. The tiger has been with me the whole life. I am not chasing for anything. I'm ambushing my opponent just like the tiger does. We are training hard to adapt ourselves to that pit and to use those walls. Once he's get adapted for the karate combat rules, he has a lot of potential to become a karate combat champion. I'm coming for not only gold, I'm coming for everything. I'm coming to take over. I love to compete, I love to put myself out in the lights and just to test myself.
every time the greats show up and be great is a reflection on their preparation. I'm training since 1998, and it's all about consistency. It's all about putting in the hard work. Come on, come on, come on. It's not just about muscles, it's about fear. He believes he is the mentally strongest fighter on the entire roster. When I came into the karate combat, they already, in my first fight, gave me the best guy on the roster. He is one of the best karate combat fighters right now. I became a champion by knocking out Rocha. Squibbers is right back. Squibbers has yeah. won it. The champ won. My mindset was to attack. Then every time after the fight, it says, ah, it was like 30 or 40%. To all the people who don't like me saying that I'm fighting on 20%, just step into the pit and make me fight 100%. Oh! The lightweight division here, Bas, should be very, very afraid. I'm the greatest fighter ever. It feels right that I'm a champion. I want you! You go! I want you! Luis wanted to go again against Scrivers. I am the official challenger to the belt. We had to make this fight happen. Edgar Scrivers and Luis Rocha are going to vie for that lightweight title belt. Uh, this champion might be unstoppable. It's fight business. Anything can happen. Maybe he will have underestimated his man. The first champion in party combat to be dethroned. In the last fight, I wasn't mentally focused. Overestimated himself. It is what it is. I don't like to lose. Nobody likes to lose, you know? The champion now will learn the wise lesson. Do not stand still. Maybe back down one time. The only failure is being afraid to take risks, to go out there. I'm going to come back even stronger. What an exciting main event we have got coming up. Of course, one half of that is Bruno Souza. And we've mentioned several times uh, that he is a protege of none other than Lyoto Machida, who just happens to be here pit side tonight. He's down there with our broadcast colleague, Alex Wendling. Yes, it is such an honor to be standing with Lyoto Machida, former world champ. You got to be pretty excited for your boy, Bruno Souza, who you've been training since he was a little boy. Yeah, I'm so excited for, for this moment. And I believe this fight is going to be very, like, excited for everyone here. Yes, their styles definitely are interesting. How do you see him getting it done tonight? So, so Bruno is a very experienced fighter because he's already fought in UFC. So he get used to fight MMA as well. So karate combat is the real karate that everybody has to be here, has to show the, the technique and go to edit. Yes, and it's such an honor that you're here tonight. Everyone was lining up to take pictures with you. So is it special that everyone appreciates you here and wants to create some memories with you? So for me, it's a, a huge moment to be here in front of this crowd. And I believe that karate combat is a huge platform, not even for karate, but for combat sports as well. And we all got to know, will we ever see the dragon enter the pit? We never know. Let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. Well, we can't wait to see it. We have an event coming December 17th, so that's on my wish list for Christmas. <laughs> Leoto teases us so much. Of course, Leoto, a, a friend and colleague here as well. He's been where you've been, uh, Stephen, calling some fights with us. Uh, he's going to be cornering Bruno Souza tonight. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first up, Bus, uh, Edgar Screevers, our former lightweight champion uh the dude is a terminator but he got dethroned and he said he's going to come back stronger that's a scary prospect that's the thing you know he he said it you know he made a mental mistake no more it's not going to happen anymore his game plan is very simple hit don't get hit you're going to see the bear slayer 2.0 <laughs> he's going to walk he's going to want a, a, a knockout in the later rounds is what he said yeah and of course uh wonder boy bruno souza you heard it there from uh, leota Machida himself a lot of experience and a lot of yes. full contact martial arts he's He's exceptionally well-rounded. That's right. Bruno Souza, he says he knows Skyvers comes forward, and he's very, very good everywhere. So he's going to work from the outside. Yeah, lots to look forward to. Of course, uh, the public always going to say here at Karate Combat, and our league president, Mr. Adam Kovac, uh,
did go to the interwebs and see what they thought. Who have you got in the KC36 main event? 72% of respondents said that Bruno Souza is going to hand our former champion Edgar Scrivers his uh, second consecutive loss here. So, uh, Bass, what do you think of that? That's a big statement. It's a big statement. Uh, you know, Edgar Scrivers, the guy when he says you're going to see the Paris Leo 2.0, I have a feeling that he added a lot to his repertoire. The last time after the fight, I said he needs to move more in and out, and, and maybe he listened. Maybe he started doing that as well. He said, hit and don't get hit. And that's to me, that's hitting him and getting out. Yeah, well, got to. Let's see uh, what Mr. Robin Black thought of all this. He always has some interesting analysis for us. So, Robin, you've dodged more zombies yet again. What do you think, Jim? <laughs> oh, guys, do you feel that? Do you feel that? That is main event time. We have had nine wonderful fights, a ton of knockouts, a ton of action. But this is our main event between two incredibly talented Karatekas. They could not be more different. Hit me with the viz. Let's see Edgar Screevers first. This guy is very, very dynamic, very explosive. He's got a ruthlessness and a relentlessness and a ferocity. And he will attack from any angle here. Death from above coming up over top. He'll come from underneath all angles. Watch here, he'll catch this, and then as you bring your fist back, he will follow with the left hand. And then he becomes defensively sound. When he's in flow, landing the uppercut, landing the hook, watch, hand comes right back to protect himself. When he is in a state of flow, he's able to put it all together. This uppercut will get the head up, get the hands up, and expose the bread basket, and then he pulverizes the organs. Very, very <laughs> skilled man, very explosive Karataka. Incredibly dangerous, and I expect him to be even better. So hard to predict what he will do. His opponent could not be more different. Bruno Sousa is a true martial artist, a Karataka. He's about becoming a better human through martial arts, but he will also rip you apart. The sidekick, the bladed stance here, catching with one hand, taking the other up underneath the leg to take his man off his feet. And like Sensei Leoto said, he's trained in so many different martial arts, striking from above, of course, a karate technique, but he used it in mixed martial arts environments as well. So he is dangerous everywhere. Bruno Salsa is such a supple and sophisticated martial artist against the explosive combat artist in Screevers. Watch here, the hands come up, then he will go to the liver. Big, Boss Rutten loves that. Now here, this is not a coincidence. He's opened that guard using his left hand, and watch, he will split it with his right hand. He is so skilled, he's so, so sophisticated. He's able to see everything, and he's able to create everything. These two men could not be more different, but we have us a magical main event. Sousa versus Screevers, karate combat. Let's do this thing. Ooh, I know how. Guys, are you ready? I'm ready. I know I'm how ready. You, you love a clash of styles, Robin. Are Robbie. you guys ready? <laughs> oh, Robin, are you ready, Roy Jones Jr.? Oh, my goodness. It is main event time indeed here at Karate Combat 36. This is the head to head for Bruno Souza and Edgar Screevers. My first experience in the pit in Karate Combat. It was like home. I think Bruno Souza is pretty confident he's done enough here. Oh, yes. My wife always said that I would be champion in karate combat. This Bruno kid is such a complete martial artist. Now I am on the show and with the big potential to be the champion. In the fight, anything can happen. When you are taking risks, it's not a failure. Failure is when you are afraid of taking risks. He will walk forward and he will eat the shots on that guard. I'm training since 1998 and it's all about consistency. It's all about putting in the hard work. Come on, come on, come on! It's not just about muscles, it's about here. He's a former champion, he's a tough opponent, he's one of the most experienced guys. You know, Sousa is a tough fighter with a lot of experience and full contact. He was on my book list even before I signed with Corey Combat. I have uh, all the respect for Sousa to stepping up. My focus now is on Scrivs, and my motivation is to knock him out. It's gonna be five rounds. Scrivs is not the type of guy that's gonna get tired. I'm not the type of guy that's gonna get tired, so I do believe it's gonna be a long fight. I'm coming in more prepared. Both of us gonna have the conditioning, we're gonna throw in at each other hard. And my mindset is on point. The constant pressure, he's already in the head of his opponent. That's how he fights. I'm not gonna feel that. It's just a matter of who's gonna be the best one on that day. And every time after the fight, says, ah, that was like 30 or 40%. 
just step into the pit and make me 500%. Yeah, that was not enough to beat Luis Vito. <laughs> In the last fight, I wasn't mentally focused. The stoppage most of the time is a little bit hard because it sits in your head. You're not going to have excuses after that. It's going to be a new version of Bear Slayer. My last opponent who was really tough, but I won the first line knockout. Victorious in his debut. It was a pretty easy fight for him. going to be putting him in the same spot. Let's see how he can handle it. It's going to be Machida Karate versus Reaver Karate. I do want a stoppage. It's gonna be the bear slayer against the tiger. I'm a tiger, I'm not a bear. I gotta rip him out. The best man is going to win. Edgar Spurs, I hope you come 100% because I'm gonna be ready to knock you out. Karate combat fans, it has been a hard hitting, action packed, memorable evening here at KC36. But now, it is time for the main event! And time to get on your feet. First, out of the blue corner. He is the Bear Slayer! So your former lightweight champion is the first to enter the pit here tonight. Edgar Scrivers hailing from Latvia. He's actually been splitting his time between uh, his new home in Dubai and Latvia. Real pressure fighter, as you heard from Robin Black, and a lot of the promotional footage there really comes forward, covers up, plays a very technical uh, guard boxing game. He just perhaps got a little bit overconfident and ate too many power shots onto that guard last time out, really looking to rebuild here. Uh, and it's a very complicated puzzle for him to solve in Bruno Souza. And his opponent for tonight's main event, fighting out of the red corner, Bruno the Tiger! This is Bruno Souza. He is the complete package, to be quite honest. He's got a, a lot of experience in a lot of different full contact disciplines. He's extremely adept. He's fought to the highest levels possible. He's a little bit younger than our champion here tonight and a little bit taller. Had an excellent promotional debut last time out with the unanimous decision win over Masip Tercek. Uh, actually, last time at KC35, uh, just recently in August. Um, but he's had a very full and complete training camp for this one. As you can tell as well, very charismatic, very personable, and very intelligent in the way he thinks about approaching these fights. So I can almost guarantee that he has game planned very uniquely to deal with the likes of Edgar Scrivers. And I'm very anxious to see what that game plan is. Oof, I can't wait, man. I, I, I really want to see what Suza is going to do when he comes forward the whole time. And I want to know what Screevers is going to do. Well, there you go, tail of the tape for Edgar Screevers, former lightweight champ, that 4 and 1 record. Of course, that one loss was last time out to Luis Rocha, standing 5 foot 6 tall, a couple of inches taller at 5 foot 8, is the man in the red corner, the Tiger, Bruno Souza. He's actually, despite being the slightly taller fighter, he's uh, got about the same length in the arms and actually less by a full five inches in the legs. But as Robin mentioned, this is the ultimate clash of striking styles. This is your main event for Karate Combat 36. Your referee for this one is Mark Goddard. And our main event tonight is brought to you by C4. Ignite your power with C4. Underway here, Black Pants, Souza, White Pants, Edgar Screevers, Josh Palmer, Bass Root, and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Pit side tonight, bringing you all the action for one final time. It's going to be five three-minute rounds. 
on the clock here for our main event. Oh, good heavy, heavy leg kick there by Edgars. Yep. Oh, I love it. Feeling out each other out, getting the jitters out. Yeah, the second leg kick he tried to eke out it. Now Bruno trying the feints now. So Screevers though, you see the much more traditional boxing style of Screevers. We're used to seeing him just come forward with, with almost reckless abandon, but hanging back a little bit now. Well, with Souza, he's got so, he's got such good counter strikers, and that's what the the Machida style is all about—the counter striking. Exactly. Yep. Right. Is, is it fair to say, perhaps, that you know Rocha possesses a, a bit more power than Souza did? I mean, they were heavy power shots that Rocha just hit him with over and over. Yes, I, I do believe that, but I also believe that uh, with Souza, he can go five rounds full on. So that's the difference. Most of the, some guys are diesels, and the other one are more uh, <laughs> sports cars. You know, and the sports car take, just takes more energy. <laughs> So Souza playing around, trying to throw that jab out there. It's coming from a very low guard position. Fires that backhand out. And the way he, Souza moved out of the way there, that was so nice. Going yes. to the body here, that's a setup. You know it's a setup to something else. And we've got to point out both these guys fighting southpaw. That lead right hand forward. This is exactly as I thought it was going to go at you this gotta, moment. Yeah, you got to watch out for Souza because he's kind of kind of circling towards his uh, power hand, his opponent's power no hand. Don't hold the knee. You're holding. Don't knee in the clinch. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. Uh, see Souza immediately knowing that was an illegal strike, positioning the referee, getting the response he wanted. Nice check by Souza. Just a flick of the hips. <sighs> Man. Can't feel the tension. <laughs> <laughs> Getting closer. Yeah, just yeah, loading getting out, closer. Inching forward. But Souza's going to be so good at circling out that that lateral movement's going to save him time and time again. Oh! oh! That's what he's looking for right there, that left hand. I mean, that landed. He can have the gamesmanship to acknowledge it all he wants, but that landed. Final 30 seconds. You've got to be careful because, you know, three minute rounds, it only takes a couple of shots like that to nick the round from your opponent. Oh, yeah. Souza going to the body with that right hand. But you saw Screevers in the beginning, he let Souza come, and now he's back to his own game yes, plan. Right. You see? He's pushing again. Oh, good shot from Souza. Wobbles the champion a little bit. Nice oh. back kick. Closing seconds here. I think that's a tough first round as well. Oh, yeah. Yes. And this could be one of those fights that's decided by just the slimmest of margins in one or two rounds. Yeah, it's going to be very close. Yeah, still a long way to go, though, and another uh, 12 minutes if they need them. Let's have a look at some of the replays from that opening round. That was a good shot from Screevers. That was the sequence that Souza had to acknowledge landed. He's going to go out of the corner now. Oh, no, that was a different moment. Yeah. Ooh. It's crazy when you when you look at these guys, man. They're, they're, like, every little movement is calculated out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The distance management, just a half an inch you give your opponent, they can take advantage of that quickly. The face right off the bat by Souza. Switching stances. Screevers again back to the center of the pit here. Coming forward a lot more decisively now. Sozo's going to have to keep those feints up to draw out his opponent's left hand. I feel like Edgar's is waiting for him to bliss so he can land that left hand. Souza switching stances here into orthodox. Actually, now you talk about that, that in the beginning when the fight started, it just was also moving backwards. But after he landed the straight, that's when he went back to his old fighting style. That's right. Yeah, the pressure and the volume. Oh, went for the takedown. Oh, yeah. And then a couple of shots on the break. I like how he's flicking the jab. See how he's flicking the jab? Yep. 
That way he's in and out and not counter, but he's still scoring. Oh, that guy. <laughs> honking the horn. Boss is going to have a word with him, whoever's honking that horn. The pool of Don Fry, break the window, pull him out. Uh, <laughs> minute and a half left in the second round here. Again, it's Screevers pushing forward. Ooh, nice right hand by Souza. Very nice. Body hat. Yeah, Screevers undeterred, though, and he's definitely back to his old self, pushing forward here. Souza's breathing fairly hard right now, though, so I don't know if it's the running. Can he keep that up all five rounds? That's what I was thinking, too. I mean, he made it through three with that kind of movement last yeah. time we saw him. So, you know, but it's a different pressure from Screevers. He's constantly having to think about it. He's constantly having to move. That was a nice little Ochi attempt from <laughs> Edgar Screevers. Let's go. Final 30 seconds here. It's Souza pushing oh, forward. Oh, some short nice. shots, though. Nice knee in, in the middle there from Scrivers as well. Good catch of the kick. I can see how Souza could be very frustrating to a guy like Edgar's. The in and out, hard to hit, kind of style. Oh, oh, like a little capoeira. Well, it was worth a shot at the end of that round, but. Uh, Closing seconds here. All right. Again, well, they both said it. I, uh, later in the rounds, they will really want to pull the trigger. So, yes. Yeah. yes. I feel like uh, his style has something to do with that. Yeah. The in and out movement, the picking, not really landing heavy shots. He's landing the heavy shots after after uh, Edgar's throws. Now, then he's throwing the heavy shots. But if you notice before that, he's just kind of picking, picking, up, picking, trying to draw out Edgar's big power shot, and then he counters that. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at point. some of the replays. That was a really nice uh, sweep attempt. That would have been very cool. If yeah, very, <laughs> very unorthodox, that's for sure. A good right hand from the Brazilian. Souza going to the bread baskets, as Robin Black says. Yeah, I'd say Brazilian. Of course, Bruno Souza's been living in uh, <laughs> Los Angeles for quite some the time. Bread right? basket. Okay. Third round underway. And this is definitely one of those fights that makes you very happy. It's over five threes and not three threes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Nice little level change on the jab. Sozo looks like he's having fun out there, though. Constantly in and out, in and out, in and out. It's like you said, he waits for the counters and then he counters those. That is the Machita way. <laughs> It's funny, eh? Shinzo and uh, Leota, they both have the exact same, same voice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of strange because Sosa is moving towards Edgar's power hand. Power hand the whole time, yeah. Yes. So watch out for away that. from that. Ooh, he's countering the jab. Yeah, he's gone back to uh, there's South the ball. There's the South Pole. <laughs> I feel that Edgar's is just powering up right now for a, just a heavy strike. Oh, <laughs> he, he, he's getting annoyed. Now he has to watch out yes. with that. Yes. You know, if you constantly miss and he can't hit him, you know, you're getting annoyed, you start opening up, and once you start opening up, that's a problem. Exactly. Yeah, now he's trying to cut, cut the pit off. Good sequences from Souza here. He's landing and getting out of the way Ooh. again. Nice counter. Yeah, his ankles also. You know, yes. He stays out of the way. Well, maybe it just took him a little bit of time to find his rhythm against uh, an opponent like Screevers, who's literally running towards him at times. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, he's getting frustrated. Yes. He has to watch out. This is certainly a much better round for, uh, for Souza. I agree. Oh. Oh. 
to stay out of the corner here. Nice. That's nice. smart. Going to the body. Let's throw. Let's throw. Stop. Stop. Separate. Separate. Good low kick. There's the takedown, the fake takedown that he said he was going to do. Stop, stop, no, you're holding him. You're holding him. Let's go, clean, let's go. You see, there you go, immediately acknowledging the situation. We've got 15 seconds left in our standard rounds here. I feel like a head kick would just be a game changer right now for either one of the guys. Yeah, we haven't seen it from uh, either fighter yet. Now that's a good round for Souza in all likelihood. Still all to play for as we're going to move to uh, championship rounds in this main event. But you know, it, it's how, how the judge is going to see this because when we say always, the, you know, coming forward gets right. the most points, right? Yeah, you're still going to land some damage though. I know, I know, but it's... He's coming forward, there's a lot of swinging and missing. There was a few body shots there. But I think Souza, his backing up skills to be able to strike backing up, safe. moving forward side to side, that sweet, that sweet left hand, right into the right. That's it, and he can never, never land a big punch because he's out the whole time. Couldn't quite catch what they were saying in the corners there. I'm sure it was uh, prolific advice. Oh, it's straight back to it. Right at it. Another three on the clock here. Fourth round underway. Black pants for Souza, white pants for the former lightweight champion Edgar Scrivers. I like the way Souza checks those uh, low oh, yeah. kicks, right? With his hip movement, Ooh. pushing his shit, shit out. Nice counter there by Edgar's. The ball, Bruce. The ball. To Edgar's one punch, Sosa's coming back with three or four. But if you notice, when Sosa throws his strikes, he's also moving his head offline. Yeah, yeah, yeah, constantly. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, he got there, though, there though. Left and the right. That's the first time we've actually seen Sosa tie up upper body as well. Stop. He's holding him. Relax. All good. Let's go. Oh, I gotta tell you, this is exactly what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. The movement. Fighting from Scrim's the outside. He called it. I mean, do you want to see anything different from either fighter now with, with like four and a half minutes left? I would say if I was Edgar's in this corner, I would say one time to simply stop, stand still, let him come. Yes. Just break Make it. him come to you. Yep. Because now he's hunting, but he's constantly moving out. He cannot really land a punch with power. It's hard. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we're not going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. heavy hands there by Edgar's. Yeah, and well on Suzu, gets sat down briefly. Let's work out, let's work out, let's work out. Oh, nice. Stop, stop. Hey, only you to do it up. Yes, sir. Come on. Body series. Body series. Yes, sir. Body Oh, oh, good shots and head movement from yeah. Souza there, wow. rolled with it. See how he's going to the body, immediately to the clinch. Yep. I would expect him to take that though also. Yes. At least a sweep. I mean, it's interesting because Screamers is, you know, has a lot of experience in, in judo and mixed martial arts as well. He's, he's not weak in those areas, we just don't see him use it all that much. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice oh. left hand. Both guys exchanging. Yeah, Souza landing again. Final 10 seconds of round number four, and that's good body work. Nice dictating the break by Souza. Oh, shot a legit double. <laughs> <laughs> no double. That was not finishing. 
<laughs> he said I didn't finish it. He yeah. said no double finishing. Oh. <laughs> Uh, interesting. So he's uh, going back to his corner a little fatigued, I think. He's going to come out, you know, he's so breathing hard for sure. It was a great round here for Scrivis. Yes. Yeah, let's take a look here at some of the replays. But Sousa, Sousa constantly coming back. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, guys, we've fight. got three minutes left on the clock here. This really could decide it all. It's, it's very, very close. What are your thoughts leading into this third, uh, fifth and final round? Sorry. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I, I think that we need to see a finish for some because it's so so hard to tell who's ahead right now. I, so, got, the, I got the needle leaning a little towards Sozo just from the movement and the counter striking. That's it. Yeah. But on the on on Edgar size, the cage control is off. Obviously, yeah. very important. I mean, you never, know, you never know if it's super super close. We can see a potential sixth round. But uh, who knows, we've got three more on the clock here. Fifth round underway, main event, Karate Combat 36. Josh Palmer, Bass Rutten, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson on the call for you today. And we uh, continue as we have been with Edgar Strievers driving forward aggressively. Let's work out, guys, let's work out of there. Let's work out, stop, stop, stop. Looking for that inside trip, yeah, looking for the throws. Scrivener sees it, he That's feels stop. it. That's stop, stop, separate. Right back into the inside. Yeah, look at that, trying to wrist grip as well, tying up. Oh. Good attempt at the throw. Zuza using uh, some inversions there to try and save himself. Risky move there. Oh, man. It's going to be an anxious minute 45 for the oh. fans of both of these gentlemen. If that would have connected. Ooh, got him fainting hard there. Good jumping knee into the frame. Let's work, guys. Throw. Throw those hands. Well, Souza tried the uh, Uchimata Stop. there. Grab no the mind. belt. Yeah, no grips to... Uh, oh! the upper body. That's a nice left hand from Scrivo. Souza covering here. He's got to get his movement back. And there's the takedown uh -huh. attempt. And sprawled Stop. very Stop. heavily. Stop when I say you're on both knees. Stand up. Not on both knees. Oh, Stand Sousa up. playing the shots with the back of the head. I mean, it's a good point. You have to have either the soles of the feet on the ground or one knee on the opponent. That surprises me for Sousa. I think he's too tired. He's going right in for the clinches. Yep. He's yeah. a better outside fighter. You can tell the movement stopped completely from yes. Sousa here. Fatigue stick kicks in. It, it's moving backwards the whole time to constant pressure. It's a lot. That's right. And now especially the body shot attacks. Also smart from Scrivers. Yeah, I mean, Scrivers is breathing deeply, but he can go this distance. We've seen him do it. 30 seconds left here. Firing in the corner. Oh, and momentum clearly swinging towards the Latvian at the end of this fifth and potentially final round. So some good counter oh. there from Sousa. Beautiful cross. Well, the crowd nice willing them on there. Last few seconds, good left hand from Screevers. And that's going to do it for the official wow. five rounds. Screevers <laughs> doesn't look tired at all. Just all screamed right. and said, let's meet in the middle. I mean, if this did go to a six, sousa has got, uh, got to be careful. Yeah. But we'll see. We're going to get the uh, judge's decision there. Discussing it pit side here. I'm staying out of it this time. I have no uh, clue. <laughs> I have no clue. Well, let's take a look back at some of the replays from that fifth round. That jumping knee from Sousa. Does the attempt, but then the referee breaks it. I think it all comes down to who won the first round, because it was so close. The two after that, second and third, I think goes to Sousa, and the last two goes to uh, Edgar's. Yep. So very Edgar. close. We could be looking at a six round here. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. One more. One more. We got yep. one. We got more. a sudden death. We've got one more. Wow. Have we? 
This is what Edgar's wants right wow. here. Yep. So the sudden death clause in karate combat has been triggered oh. by the judges. They're just double checking. And we're good to go for a sixth round. Well, all to play for here. They know that if they win this round, they're going to win the fight. Yeah. So <laughs> we expect fireworks here now. Everything you got for three minutes here. Souza firing the short shots. He's got his momentum back. He's got his movement back. Oh, there's a head kick. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, the yeah, exchanges. Yeah. Round number six, underway. Oh, nice little trip on the outside. Souza counters with an Uchimata, rolls through. He's got to get back to his feet here. He doesn't want to hang out. Seconds will tick away very, very quickly in this one. Nice Ooh. short knee there by Scribbles on the way out, by oh, the way. Souza just throwing hands. Woo! He's constant. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about dig deep time, this is it. And Screever's starting to look a little fatigued now. Whoa, man. Oh, nice kick on the inside from Souza, but he's eaten several shots from Screever's up top. You got to throw when you're in these, in these situations right here. Stop. Yeah, tries a little shoulder shrug shot from Souza. Halfway point of this sixth round. Souza peppering little shots. Screamers responding. Good luck scoring this thing. Jeez. <laughs> I know, right? This is crazy. Well, again, they tie up. Oh. oh. Body shots from Screamers. Souza looks like he's trying to dictate the break here. Right. And Screavers isn't letting him go. Nice reap. Can't really wrestle up on top, though. Wow, man. Less than a minute left. Souza getting up extra slow. It's mind games, it's heart games, it's everything you got. 30 seconds left on the clock. You can't just grab, you gotta throw. Yeah, Mark Gallant's gonna break them quick here. Oh, man. Good work from Screamers. <laughs> 20 seconds left. <laughs> oh, again, <laughs> real good wrestling good scramble. We're not in the school wrestling, unfortunately. I'm scrambling here. Yeah, 10 seconds left. One more big flurry. Spinning cartwheel kick from Screamers. <laughs> He's almost doing it at the end. Oh. Yeah, well, he catches the leg, scores the single leg takedown. He's going to wow. have the final moment of the round, and Edgar Screamers thinks he's done enough. So does Bruno Souza. Ooh. I've got no clue, I've got to be honest. Me neither. I'm staying out of this one, fellas. Uh, Could there be a second? Second yeah. death? <laughs> sudden death? I don't think we have that in the rules. So. <laughs> okay. It's a hard one. It's a hard one to call. Man. Oh, Edgar Screamers Scre Scre Scre wants a seventh. Uh, let's have a look at the replays of that sixth and sudden death round. And there were a lot of good shot, short shots on the inside from uh, Edgar Screamers here. This was the uh, single leg right at the very end. Textbook. Takedown there. Nice hip push there from Souza. Right, wow. We're going to go to the judges' scorecards. Let's find out who's going to take this main right, event. Let's hear it for yeah. two fierce combatants who epitomized. Tonight they epitomized what karate combat is all about. Our winner by unanimous decision from the blue corner, Edgar! Yes. The Beer Slayer! Screevers! <laughs> so Edgar Screevers rebounds.
from his loss to Luis Rocha, taking a very, very tight <laughs> going <laughs> to the president win. there. Yeah, points win over Bruno Souza after a sixth sudden death round. Good show of respect from these two guys. Edgar Scriva is heading up to talk to the corner of his opponent very quickly. He's yeah. going to improve his karate combat record to five wins and one loss. I'm sure we're going to talk about it a bit more, but uh, he is a puzzle. Let's uh, uh, let's see if Alex Wendling can get a word with Edgar Scrivers. The Bear Slayer. The Bear Slayer, congratulations. What went through your mind when you knew you had to fight another round? There is no power, no strength, except God. Thanks, alhamdulillah. And I know this was a big fight for you to bounce back from. So what do you want next for your future in the pit? After that, I want to say congrats to Bruno. It was really good performance, good fight. This is what we wanted. We wanted five rounds. We got six rounds. Thanks to all commission, karate combat. And after this, you can run, but you can hide. Luis, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Save that belt for me. Wow! <laughs> Congratulations, the Bear Slayer. <laughs> that is out. <laughs> Well, let's have a look at some of the stats from that one. The high punch numbers, I yeah. imagine, indeed. Good luck with that. Uh, let's have a look. So, strikes <laughs> landed 115 to 85. Outstriking with the kicks, the takedowns, and the punches as well. Uh, pretty much the story of the fight there. Bruno Souza starting very well, perhaps fading a bit towards the end. We'll discuss that in a moment. But first, let's head down pit side for final reflections on that one from Robin Black. Thanks, guys. A fight like that can be so incredibly inspiring. You know, martial arts is about many things. It's about skill, it's about technique, it's about learning, it's about growth. But sometimes it's about guts and toughness and sheer will. And that's what that sixth round was really about. Screevers continued to gain more information throughout that fight as he fatigued his man. But he also really had to figure out the arrhythmic movement of Bruno Sosa. You know, a great man once said, guilty feet have got no rhythm. Well, if that's yes. true, Edgar Screevers is innocent. <laughs> yes, thank you, Robin. Uh, Bas, Wonderboy, final thoughts on that one. Uh, Bruno Sousa, he had the movement, and then when he didn't have the movement, it was all Edgar Screevers. That was it. He just simply broke him down at the very end when he started fatiguing, and that's why he got it in round number six. I didn't expect it in the beginning. He had a different game plan, but as soon as he landed the big left Man. on Sousa, he went back to his old style, and that was pushing, pushing, pushing. And that constant pressure to a guy that relies a lot on his movement and his counter striking can wear you down as the fight goes on. So you saw it. He started to fatigue later on in that sixth round. He was done. And what about Edgar Scrivas asking for a seventh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can keep going. I mean, yeah. I mean, the way he ran up after the fifth round, right? Like, well, OK, whatever, let's go. Yeah. He doesn't get tired. Going to be an absolute nightmare, of course. Potentially down the line, we might see the rematch with Luis Rocha. Oh, yeah. 100% we're going to see it. <laughs> you know, I don't see Scrivers uh, lose now. Rocha is on a tear. He's doing really well. He won everything in his last four fights as well, I believe. So now, yeah, that will set it up. That would be great. Of course, we've got lots more coming your way from Karate Combat. We're going to round out 2022 back here, December 17th in Orlando. Here's a quick preview of what you can expect in two months' time. Yeah. KC 37 coming up December 17 on the back lot of Universal Studios. 10 amazing fights. Bantamweight title on the line. Owen Chelmia, Jesus Lopez is going to be fire. Josh Palmer is there and the great GSP. Tarek Khalifi versus Samuel Erickson. Explosive night of fights to finish the year. Go to karate.com. Ooh, what a bantamweight fight that's going to be, Jesus <laughs> Lopez and Owen Chelmia.
Shelby is another one. He's like a screevers, right? Yes. He's also coming right. forward, walking forward, and just keep barraging and punches, and he's just freaking crazy. Uh, and zero facial expression. <laughs> I don't know if he's happy, excited, sad. Mob in this oh. corner, <laughs> always there, happy family, destroying people. Lots to uh, lots to look forward to in December. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights of our evening here. Oh, Fernando yeah, yeah, yeah. Paz, Diego Avenado. This was a great work from Fernando Paz. Bonk, yeah. He, he, he's just a powerful puncher, and he went yes. for the body, and then the left hook to the head. Look at that. It was all over the place, and that set everything up till this punch. Oh. And that Every. was the one that got the lights out. Yeah, a lot of fun in the welterweight division in that one. I felt like he didn't throw a soft punch during that entire fight. <laughs> he, he's always like that as well, you know, and he's got that crazy power. Of course, James Vick made his promotional debut against George Perez, uh, not going the way for the Texecutioner tonight. No, no, no, it's really weird because he's got great hands. He didn't let his hands go, but in the preview, in the, in the meetings, he said his opponent's got strong hands, and maybe that, you know, he thought, I'm going to counter his kicks. I don't know what he was doing, but I think if he lets his hands go, he's a much better fighter. 100%. I think he actually got hit with that right hand early on in the fight. He just kind of went down to him from there. Yep, yep, Co yep. Co-main event, Igor de Casaneda and Ooh. Franklin Mina. Oh. Uh, KO of the night in all likelihood. Yeah, that was... Oh, yeah. I don't get to officially decide that, of course, but, you know. I'll decide for you. It was a good one. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was, was great. great. And it went both back and forth. Mina hit him, rocked him, then he rocked Mina, then Mina rocked him, and then the final punch came here, Katunk, and that was lights out. Yeah, clean as you like it from the Iberian Bull. He's pushing forward for a match with our middleweight champion, Ross Levine. And, of course, we finished with that lightweight main event, Bruno Souza and Edgar Scrivers. Uh, very final thoughts on that. Yeah, what, once you look at this, you see replays, that was a whole fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they went constantly. There was no, I mean, the, the amount of punch, 115 landed. I mean, <laughs> versus 85, that's crazy. Landed, how many did you throw? Yeah, Lee. Oh, yeah. my goodness. What a, what a great performance from Edgar Screevers. Uh, guys, we've had a great time here tonight. We did. Always a blast hanging out with you guys. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and I gotta say, I gotta, you guys, you, you look really awesome. No, you, look <laughs> no. at you, man. Oh, you look yeah. awesome. Look at that. Uh, look at I'm those eyes. Certainly very orange right now. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here at Karate Combat 36. Don't forget, Karate Combat 37 is coming your way December 17th from right here in Universal Studios. Of course, we're launching our DAO. Go ahead to karate.com forward slash airdrop. Get yourself on the pre order list for that app and those karate tokens. Uh, that about does it for tonight from myself. Josh Palmer, Bass Rutten, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Alex Wendling, and Robin Black. We'll see you in December.